well, nearly. Uh, good morning. Welcome to Selling Quarter. I'm Natasha McCarthy. You've got me for the next four hours. And this morning, I am joined by the very fabulous Jess Entwistle. She's here. She's made these. Here they are. Beautiful. So let's see what we've got coming up this morning. Okay, it's Technique Thursday. Um, 9 a.m. is our Dove Garland. Oh, sorry, 8 a.m. Sorry. 9 a.m. Let's talk about 9 a.m. Christmas fabrics. I'm already thinking about Christmas. All about Christmas. Uh, 10 a.m. is our festive tableware. And then 11 a.m. is your perfect paper piecing. So we've got some lovely gift ideas there. Now, we'd love to hear from you. Always we love to hear from you. Um, so if you'd like to get in touch, then here's how. Head to the website. And on the website, go to where you can watch us. Watch us live. And then just underneath, there's a little idly biddly box. There we go. That's watch. And then idly biddly box there uh, says message the studio. And you can say hi. If you've got lots to send us, like a great ream, uh, half a book, or photos. If you've got photos to send us, we'd love to see your makes. Then that's an email job. So that's studio at sewingquarter.com. That comes straight through to the studio, as it suggests. Yeah. Uh, and then producer Paul can do his magic and get it so we can show your pictures on air. Hooray! So today I'd like to see you at festive makes. That's what I'd like to see from you. What do you make for Christmas? Today we're making the doves, the beautiful doves. Um, and this has divided the studio by age. As to those of you <laughs> that remember, the dove from above. Crrr, crrr. Uh, and those that are too young to remember quite frankly. Uh, but we've got kits for these and the kits uh, to make the grey, which is this one here, and you get instructions and all your filling is here. So you get your thread, well, your ribbon. I'm going to say ribbon uh, because you also get your thread and you also get your skein to do all the beautiful embroidery. Um, half a metre of each of those fabrics, 24.99 stuffing, instruction, everything, everything. It's the full kit, absolute full kit. Now, that's the silver. We've also got red. Oh, look at the thread here, fabulous. So here you've got sparkly, sparkly thread, lovely. Yeah, Jess, you haven't seen this one, have you? Uh, you've got your gingham and then you've got that. And then these are your beautiful fabrics here, 24.99 again. Don't forget, also get instructions and stuffing the whole lot and then the last one which stay there which we're going to demo with here we go is your your typical so this is a sort of your your dove color yeah just like yeah 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 uh which is this is sort of the, the most affordable one this is 19.99 so if you just love the blue i love the simplicity of just the blue and the white it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Simplicity at its best. You're still getting your stuffing. You're still getting your instructions. You're still getting everything. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take the doves with me. Portable doves. <laughs> They're a bit fab, aren't they? <coughs> you have to excuse me this morning. I'm That's all right. Croaky. Hello, darling. Hello. Mwah. 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 How very lovely to have you on the show. Thank you. I've seen you for a little while. I know. I've been off. And Be then well. I'm here for two days. I am. I'm very well. We're in the middle of, you know, Halloween, bonfire night, Christmas. It's that time lovely of year. Sunny. Yes. Mm, I know. It's the best time of year, isn't it? It's really lovely. We uh, did pumpkin carving last night because <gasps> Freddie really? fell asleep the night before. And uh, was too tired to carve pumpkins. <laughs> doesn't yeah. matter. It's three. doesn't know what day it is. He doesn't he's got a clue. Yeah. He doesn't care. But whilst I was off during half term, we did start making decorations for Christmas. Oh, cool. Yes. And he got to do all the stuffing. Yeah. Which they love doing, let's yes. face it, because then it becomes a toy. Mm -hmm. But doves were in there. Really? Yes, they were, and he absolutely loved doing oh, it. Oh, cool. So it's a great project. You can either hand sew these, or you can machine sew. Yeah, so yeah. as you say, it's portable. You can take it on a train, or if you're going somewhere, just make little doves. It's very easy. Now, this is your design, isn't it? It Where is. Take these instructions. I, um, this is actually, the original design was um, for simply sewing a couple of Christmases ago, and it was part of the denim series I do. So this is actually white denim and indigo denim. Oh. Yes. Is that why we stole the idea to use the white and the blue? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, we, we'll but it's trans it. you know, it's trans transposable, transportable. Either of those. Transitional, works. whatever yeah. it works. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's where that actually came from. It's somewhere in the in the building, I think, this original one. Oh, is it? Yeah, somewhere. Is it here? Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know if we're going to have a look at this from... Yeah. See? 
Dove from above. I love the way this is being photographed. <laughs> Dove from above, you see. Yes. Uh, so, step by step, super easy instructions. This is what we want, ladies and gents, because this could be the very first project that you ever do. Mm, never know. Or, and it's really, it's really easy to do. I mean, when I, when I did this um, years ago, the first time I did this, my little design, and when I did this years ago, uh, the, the, the test I did, I always do a test or something, ended up as my, I did one with it in the door wreath, so I had a sort of like a wicker door wreath and I actually had the dove on a, on a twig. Oh, nice. And then my test had a pink wing, white and pink. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's you, can, you can bend, we've done them here obviously on a string, but you can do individual ones to hang from window hooks nice. or on the tree. So, yes. How do we make them then? How do we make them? Well, first of all, I need the instructions. Oh. Just so you can see. So, this is actually a, a really simple um, project. The actual, let's look at the template. The template uh, it doesn't include seam allowance, so you're actually cut out around the outside. So, what we'll do is we'll start very simply with... You copy your template. I always do mine on grease proof paper. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, and also mark on there, because of course then you can see, mark on there the actual points you need. So you're turning out where the ribbon goes, um, your eyes and your wing. And also that's just where the hand sewing goes. So I always mark on the wing that way around. Oh, that's nice because then you're going to have matching wings. We're not exactly. leaving anything to no. chance here. And you just you just flip them over. So what what the actual original instructions when I did this years ago, I end up cutting out cutting out double pieces for everything. But what I'll do now is I'll show you how I do it quicker. If oh. I may have the iron on, please. So what you do is you take your fabric. It's on. It's on, and you get loads of fabric. I mean, yeah. do, does it say how many meters you um, get? In is there? it a whole meter? I think you half get half a meter of each. Yeah, and there's loads. There is loads left over. I mean, I made six, and there's there's loads of bits left over. As you can see with these ones, I also double sided the wings, so you get uh, a bird and a paler grey, and then the wings are darker oh, and paler. Nice. You can see. Yes, mix so, them up. Mix and match. So what I did first of all was using your pen, is you just draw round the outside of your dubs. Like now, this. the other tip that I can throw out there, because this is what we've been doing, um, is to make them smell like Christmas. Ooh! Yeah, what we got mould wine sachets. <gasps> nice! And stuffed mould. Don't do what... The first thing that I did was to actually cut and open the mould wine sachet. Don't do that. <laughs> that was a complete mess, and we had to get the hoover out. Um, so next time, we just stuffed the whole sachet in, into the bird. What, without even opening it? Yeah. Well, what, what I've done before with seasonal decorations is, is I do a mix of stuff which is dried orange peel, um, cloves, nice. um, cinnamon, cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, um, and then I think a mix of those all together. And then I use... So basically mulled wine. Yeah, mulled wine. And then also add some orris root to ground up orris root. Makes things better. Oh, whatsy, whatsy, Oris whatsy. root, you can buy it most herbalists. It's... I don't know what it's actually from, but I do know that... An oris. Oris. I, let's make it up. It's an oris plant from oris land. Anyway, what it actually does There will be someone out there that knows. There will be someone that knows. <laughs> Messages, what, it's, know. it's, it's, it's a traditional thing you use for potpourri, and it makes it scent last longer. So when I've done, made a whole load of, of um, the mix and then mixed it in with the stuffing mm -hmm. on Christmas decorations in the past, you just give it a bit of a squeeze and a rub, and it releases the scent again. So I've got oh. ones, I've made sort of candy canes and things, fabric candy mm. canes, which are really easy to do in striped fabric. I might show you how to do that one day. Um, and I did that a few years ago, and you just give them a bit of squeeze, bring them out of the box, and they're just as fresh as they were when they first did them. So oh, it really fair. works really well. So you get the stuffing in with the kit, but yeah. if you want to add extra stuff like that in, then you can. You yeah. absolutely can. There's nothing to stop you whatsoever um, in making these as Christmassy as you like. But actually, they're just really quite pretty. They um, are. And you, can, you I mean, we, we've done them Christmas here, and of course, I was just thinking... You can change it whenever you actually want, change different colours. Of course you can. I think, you know, shabby chic. Yeah. You, or, or even in, um, as kids bunting, in kids, pretty colours. Oh, it'd be really pretty, because we've obviously stuffed them here, so they've got a bit of weight. You can actually do them flat, or you could actually use the template on felt or something, like, really right. easy to do it in felt. Um, so what I, what I do when I've got something like this is, once I've drawn the outside and done my markings, leaving at least a centimetre around the outside of the corner of your fabric, I always, you can probably see it here, do the marks, sorry, all the way around, do the marks on the reverse of it. Right. Push it back on. This is a razor pen. And then using the end. Oh, controversial. There it is. And there it is. And do the same with the wing placement. Because then you already have your mark. You don't have to worry about getting it in the right place. Ooh, top tips. Um, Hang on, it's only 10 past eight. And already we've got top tips aplenty. Here we go. And because this is, thank you, because this is grease proof paper, 
I mean... Oh, it doesn't soak in? It doesn't soak in, and if it rips, you just use it again. So there you go, and then I just put that in again. So nice. there we are. So what I've done this time round... Yes. ...is I've done one, I'll just quickly cut out a little bit, and then I place it... You see, part of me would just be folding that in half and cutting them both at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but then you have the thing, if you, if you stitch it, sometimes it might move and you might go over the edge. So what I did for these, because you get loads of fabric and you can also mix in what you actually want, is I then put that on top of another piece mm. and then I stitch all the way around there. Oh, you stitch before you cut? Yes. We're leaving oh. a... Yeah, so I'm just going to pin so that. So a little bit Tilda-esque. In is it? She, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, so with with Tilda, you would um, you would draw your template. So fold your fabric in half, draw yeah. around the template, stitch, and then cut. Yeah, so this I mean this is also if you're doing if you've got you want to do a whole load like batch making, you could do loads of this and then just you've got a whole load of paper just fabric with your double layers all stitched together. You could just go round and round and round, <laughs> which I did with the wings. So I did um, there were twelve wings there, so it's quite a lot. So I will just quickly now stitch from there all the way around to there, and that's your turning gap. So that's your turning, yeah, yeah, you see, I'm glad that that's actually marked on there because yeah. I always, I either leave too much or too little, and actually it's a fine balance. It is. Yeah. Now, what I've also done with this one is, mm. I, you cut your ribbon, because these are hung on 20 centimetre length ribbon. Right, okay. So what I do at this point is, I, because with white you can really see, with the other colours, um, you have to be a bit more careful where you can so, but I'll show you what I mean. This is the placement, and you can see, this is the placement of your ribbon. The way, yeah. the way you spend ages when you design something trying to work out how you hang it up. So you think you put it that way and it hangs the wrong it's way. The, it's got to be the right angle, hasn't it? It's the right angle, yeah. So what I do is I jiggle this around. Jiggle, jiggle. Leave at least a centimetre up the top just so you don't stitch through it. And then I pin that in place. So that's actually stitched in. And then when I sew it round, and this is sewn, we start from there and go around there, and I move that out of the way for the turning gap so you don't stitch through it. Oh! Yeah. Now, of course, if you wanted to do that just as, a, as an individual hanging item, then you'd just do it double fold loop. that yeah. and stick yeah. that through. This is whatever we actually, however you actually want to deal with your bird, this is how you do it. So you do your double loop or, you know, I mean, you might, might decide you want to use embroidery thread or um, red and or, or twine or something like that. You want it a bit more, you want to save your ribbon for something else. Because you do get masses of ribbon. I think it's four metres on, on one of those things of ribbon. And I had a, a bit left over. I mean, that's a two metre... I like to keep you lots. I know. Well, that's a two metre... I mean, and the stuffing, you get so much stuffing. It's really nice stuffing as well. It is four metres. It is four metres. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, an awful lot of stuffing. Great big bag of stuffing. Um, so you've done six, but plenty yes. left over. Oh, could, plenty. How many, could you, how many more do you think you could have done? I'm trying to think. I've got the fabric in here, and I've got it out. Hang on a sec. I'll tell you. Here we go. Hide the uh, evidence. Right, okay, so bearing in mind I was mucking about the fabric, that's what I have left over which I squared off. So this is all squared off, but well, hang on a minute, that's, yeah. you've barely used half. Exactly, and it's, it's a really nice print, I love this print. You can make little napkins with it. Oh, lovely. So that one I did, I was mucking about with different shapes, so you, but that's, that's what I had left over squared off, so all the little bits are put to one side. So actually loads. you've got at least, hang on. Because they're double sided, yeah you can make loads. How big is your bird? He's not that big. That's the thing, you can scale him up as well if you wanted One, to. One, two, three. You can get another three. You can get another six at least in there. Easily. And then that, the, your wing fabric. So another, easily another six. What you could do, because it's, it's a decent shape, is you could actually do that as a cushion front and do an applique of a dove. Oh, nice. Wouldn't that be really pretty? Oh, that would be really nice. pretty, because it is such a pretty print, this one. Yes. Yes. And you've got your, your red um, embroidery thread, or of course... Or, or you could do like the quilt behind in your Christmassy colours and then leave one of those as a pocket yeah, and then put a little toy dove in for a little one. Because this is the same, it's the different... Yeah, it's, it's, the, um, it's like the negative of it. That would actually, the, the doves would look really pretty with this as well, wouldn't yes. it? That'd be lovely. You, yeah, you could... You could Oh, look. Oh, oh it's like really it was nice. made. That's so gorgeous. once you have dove, you're going to be doving everything. I'm turning that into a verb. Doving. Doving. <laughs> uh, once you dove, you can't stop. No, it, that didn't work, does it? No, it doesn't really work at all. But um, it is, I mean, I, I, I was also thinking, we were talking earlier, when, could you actually turn your doves into, into chickens? 
by giving them combs. That's what they're called. Combs. combs. Yes. We couldn't think what the word was, could we? Well, no, we were, no, it wasn't. No, we were talking about turkeys. Ooh, it was the wibbly yeah. wobbly bit on the turkey. What is that called? A gobble gobble is what we always used to call it. A gobble gobble. A gobble gobble. But you've got your fundamental doves, and that's a great place to start. If you want to have a play, then do. But fundamentally, a dove is a good place to start. Yeah. I'm thinking if you've got um, kids who want to sort of give something like this a try, it's a great way, especially for doing hand sewing. Yes. I mean, with, with, because you're using the machine, you're moving it around and you're just sort of taking it off and going round and round. Just take it slow and go around and you'll be fine. I, um, I've bought Freddie his first needle. First needle? To, to start to sew. It's plastic. Oh, oh, oh I know those like ones. One of the, yeah. Pink or yellow or oh, something. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, he's got two. He's got a green one and a yellow one, I think. Um, so because it's time that he started, because he, every time he comes into my workroom, he wants to... Yeah, you've got proper kids yeah. as well. So, uh, yeah, he can, he can start, to, start to have a go. Well, they also do it in, in, um, when he starts school. Though you'll also find you'll come, they'll come back with um, interesting decorations made out of felt. Yes, like random there'll be all of that. Random fish or sharks or something. But actually, what a lovely end-of-term gift to give to a teacher. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, and that's a really nice because thing. Because I'm sure... decorations or I'm something. I'm sure that they would all get bored of having... Bear Box of chocolates from everyone, yeah, or something like that. So now, get your kids to actually do something creative. Yeah. I would have loved this. So easy to follow instructions. Step by step, you've got written and photographed instructions, which is lovely. Here we go. Dove from above. And it is. You're yeah, absolutely step by step. Even down to the wing, it's all in there. Even how to sew them up again. And again, step by step with your template it's all in there we think the template is so clear thank you just to add your seam allowance and i love the fact that you've even got way where to stitch on the wing well so that it's you a get, guide isn't it yeah so that you get equal wings equal wings because you wouldn't you wouldn't want wonky wings no you wouldn't you're just going to be flying around in circles now i'll just put that I, I love that print that's such a gorgeous print that gray one has to be said now well it, it's it's traditional isn't it and it's it's just a, a beautiful Keep it as Christmas. Yeah. I like the white and the blue an awful lot because I just think it's classic. It doesn't have to go away at Christmas. No, it doesn't. Now, what we do now is we then trim around, being careful not to cut through your ribbon because there's nothing more irritating when you get to this point. And I've done it so many times. You get there and you think, hang on a minute. What did I do? What did I do? Pick it and redo it. So what I do, um, you, you clip corners when you get to the corners. What I now do because you get so tired you know snip 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 is i use a um pinking shears right so i tend to um, pink a lot these days so i'll just pink all the way around and then we're going to turn him out but before we do that we need to mark the other side so i'll show you what we do once i've done that because if you don't mark your um eye points and your wing placement on the other side at this point it's going to be quite you end up with wonky wings no one wants wonky wings no one see? wants wonky wings no it's just no. it's not a good look it's not a good look no i've never really liked for wonky wings so careful 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 careful, careful. careful so i tend to at this point take, take off thinking shears because it's now a straight line because you always try to have your turning gap on straight line making sure that's out the way very carefully live on air yeah yeah what could possibly go wrong everything <laughs> so and then we'll just turn over the other side now you can see because you've got the stitching ah you like to actually follow so you know what to do leave a little make sure I'm snip there now very careful <laughs> um make sure uh that you have enough fabric uh, where your turning gap is, so that when you tuck it in, it's not going to be sort the of. The boys like are trying out. to be practical, and they said, "Can't you just tuck the ribbon back inside?" What when you stitch it up? No, no, no. When you when you cut, could you not just tuck that back in there? Yes, and then that cut would be round? a very sensible point. Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know they're listening and paying attention. Well, it's Clever. Just, yeah, you see, it's just just checking, just checking. Just checking, we're actually listening. Um, also, I was thinking when you actually do it with this shape, it looks really cute, sort of pinked anyway. If you're doing, if you decide to do this in felt, yes, um, it would look really pretty. Um, when I first did this as a test, because it was in denim, I made the um, this shape slightly more exaggerated because it's denim, it's stiffer. So when you have it in fabric, the actual, I suppose, the bottom of the bird, it, it's more pronounced. It's rather rather cute in fabric. Ooh. More pronounced, right? Okay, so then you do that like that and then we turn it right side out but before we do that we mark the other side so what i do is i get with white you can see 
not necessarily under studio lights you can see. You can hold it up to the universal light box known as the window <laughs> and mark. <laughs> Which everyone's got. The Unless universal you're doing light it at box. Night time, Unless you're doing it at night time. Or you use your same machine because you've got a light there. Or what you can do, so I've marked the cross. Well, everybody obviously has bought a daylight lamp yeah. from us, so they're all fine. Well, there we are. Yeah. And if you haven't, or you're thinking of getting it for Christmas, what another thing you can do is... Well, this will make you realise that you need one yeah. anyway, at least. What things I've done when I've used in darker fabric is I just put pins every... You know when you used to do dot to dot? Yes. This is like dot to dot. So you put your pins through. Please be careful with pins. I will. I won't stab myself. Okay. So... And then that gives you your shape on the other side. And then you just put a little mark. Yes. Very rough mark. And you take your pins out, not stabbing yourself. Careful with Again. the pins. Careful with the pins. And then you can mark it there. And ah. the, because this is on the reverse. Yeah. But if you do it, make, if you've got darker fabric, whatever you actually use, if you might had to use, I suppose you use white, don't we? Yeah. Um, when you turn it out, you'll be able to see it. That's right. the point. So then we'll turn this right side out. And I've already done one. I prepared earlier. Uh, but it already is looking fabulous. Just it a quick is. stitch around. And that's Thank what you. I like about this. This can be, yeah. um, if you're hand stitching, then you can, uh, you know, you can absolutely do this just in the car yeah. if you're waiting. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's what he looks like. Right. When he's turned Ooh, right side a out. a pin there. And a pin there. As you can see, this, this, this always fades. So at this point, because you can see it was from poking through from the other side, just put your marks on again so you can see. And there they are. And there they are. And then you stuff him. If you can't see, can you just get your pattern yes. back out and just yeah. mark mark with your pattern again? Exactly, just put it on there. Whatever your, me your preferred method is. Because, yeah, because you have your, your template. Do you know what? Just having a, a choice of, of options in your armoury is entirely up to you. If you, don't, if you don't want to play with pins, and just do that. Now, you he's have there. He's, he's there, there, ready to stuff. And you, this, when you sort of see, you wonder why the ribbon's like this. Now you can see the ribbon because of the way it's like it that. It falls it perfectly. It then falls perfectly. You spend a lot of time making sure they're right. And wouldn't that look really pretty? Yes. You know that's where he's going to go. Exactly. If you're doing kids' decorations, they just want little flat felt ones. Wouldn't that be really cute? Really cute. Now, I always have on my windowsill. I put sort of a um, branch of holly or something oh, and, nice. then, and then put robins and birds and stars yeah. and things in there but they're always stuffed so they just sit oh that's really nice you idea. see that i suppose you it's could there you could also i suppose if you wanted to have a little hole here have little twigs for legs so he stands up oh yes that'd be quite cute wouldn't it or pipe cleaners Pipe cleaner, I suppose so. Might make, make industrial sort of strength pipe cleaner so it's not sort of buckled under the weight of the stuff. Well, just stuffing. so that you can tie them onto branches. Oh, nice. Oh, that'd be really cute. Now, time to stuff our bird. We're using the um, Derek the Dobber today because I usually use a chopstick, which I've left at home, along with the mascara. <laughs> I've got a mascara this morning. It's all at home. Now, when it comes to stuffing, you want to make sure that your points are stuffed first and you always try and use a little bit of stuffing otherwise you're going to end up with some, wrong. well yeah otherwise you're going to end up with a sort of fat bird here and a slightly sort of um less fat beak and end to your tail okay so i will get a oh, drop oh, him on, the, on floor. the floor and i'll start stuffing him through the lovely turning gap as you see because when you turn it out and you press it you've now pressed your um your um turning gap so it'll be really easy to stitch later on Ah, that's the yeah, key then, that's the key. It? I mean, what I always always tend to do as well is also use a chopstick or home, whatever you actually use when you're doing that to make it nice and sort of flat before you press it. So she's taking it out of the line, there we go. Um, and then you've got your shape already because there's nothing worse when you actually got something in the, and, it's all, and it looks a bit odd. It doesn't actually fit. So I'm going to start stuffing him now. That's where you would suddenly make him into a turkey or something. Yeah, It went a bit wobbly there. Or you do the hideous unpicking. No. No. Do you know what? You've got that much fabric in this bundle. Just make another one. Yeah, make loads. I mean, I, I, the, the first one I did, um, I did the ribbon just because even though you've been doing this for years, you do, you, everyone makes mistakes. The ribbon was too short, so I ended up being a little bit, he sort of frayed a bit because I, I cut it too short. And uh, he is currently in our sitting room uh, next to a Nerf gun, which I'm trying to uh, not uh, observe children shooting my daughter in the Nerf gun. Oh, the joy of boys. <laughs> joy of boys. Oh, girls. One of, um, one of our eldest um, friends had a Nerf party and she loved her Nerf. Is that Nerf. a thing? It is a Nerf party. I don't like them. I'm no. not a gun fan myself. No. But um, 
okay, you know, <laughs> let them join in. But yeah, she t she rocked up with this. I think they do pink nerves. Yeah. Oh, I don't it's know. A scary old world it's out there. Scary isn't old it? World. Now I think we'll stick to stitching. Stitching is much nicer. <laughs> much nicer. Mommy, much why nicer do you like this? Because it's a nerve gun. I'm sure that um, I know a lot of guys out there going, it's just a girl. Right. Okay. So we stuffed just into the beak there, yes. and now I'm going to stuff into his corner of his tail. So there we go. I'd love to see how these look in red, actually. They'd look really pretty in red. I hadn't seen the red one. I think a variety. Oh, I'll go and have a look at, in a moment at all of the different um, bundles that we've got for you this morning. Cool. But I think this, mm -hmm. is, this is a classic. This is one that I wouldn't take down. I, 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 um, because it's I not... took the wreath down because I felt with Christmas off, but I'm going, to, I'm going to make loads of different colours this year. They just look so pretty. It just, it's... It's just lovely, and I might have to use some of that grey if I've got some light well, at home. Well, I think it's, it's, so um, nice. it's just a lovely way of, of having something a little bit different. Um, just and you know, because stars and everything, yeah, yeah, you see them day in day out. Yeah. For Christmas, and then, but this is just something a little bit different. And I, yeah, I'd leave it up. In fact, I'd do them in all sorts of different colours. I think for nurseries, as a decoration oh, for nurseries, lovely. would be lovely. And again, because um, you know, often you're battling against the the nappy bin. So oh, if you can yeah. put lavender and stuff like that in as oh, well. Oh, yeah, or draw. I suppose you wouldn't want them in a drawer, would you? But, you know, you get sort of lavender sashes in drawer. Or, or hanging in um, a wardrobe. Oh, yeah, because you, you could you do it to hook over. Yeah, you could. Um, hook over your hanging. Also, I know it's... Coat a, hanger. As coat hanger, I think, yes. I have no words today. <laughs> Full of cold and no words. Sorry. That's all right. What I was thinking was, I was playing around with the wings, or did the wings in a bit, but I love this little design. If you want to put like a hair slide or something on there, little oh, angels. Wow. If you've got that Christmas little, little um, angel wings for if you've got a little yes. girl. You could, because you've got little angel wings there, you could actually make little peg dollies. You could have little wings, couldn't you? Um, so ah. Barbie or Cindy or whatever they have these days. Could have, <laughs> well, yeah, because little kids, they have, they have the elastic yeah, wings, wings, don't they? So they're, now their dolls can have the same. Oh, I like that. That'd be really cute. Detachable, um, detachable doll wings. <laughs> I love that. Or even little little wings together, just hanging on the tree, would look really cute. Little angel wings falling from the sky. I'm going to leave you to stuff. Okay, cool. I'll carry on, and I'll be back. Now, um, the red we mentioned, didn't we? Now, don't forget, you get instructions with all of these. Each of these kits, you're going to get instructions with. You're also going to get great big. I want to say that this is. How many? Yeah, it is 250 grams. So that feels like a lot. It is a lot. So you've got an awful lot of stuffing there because you can make an awful lot of birds out of this. So there's your stuffing. Now, the red is super exciting because look, for your wings, you're getting beautiful silver skein. I don't think we've ever had that on air. No, no, we're just discussing up in the gallery whether or not they've ever seen that. No, we say no. But with this, we say yes. Then, you see, what I'm thinking is you, if, if with the fabric that you've got left over, if you want to do something else, you could always do little French knots on sort of a feature tree and make little Christmas decorations on the tree, couldn't you? So you're getting half a metre of this gorgeousness. There it is. See, that's a lot of, that's a lot of robin. Well, you, would it become a robin mm. if it's in red? rather than a dove? That's the question. Oh, I don't know. Possibly a robin. Uh, so we've got all of that. And then you've also got another half metre. So there's so much fabric in here. There you go, that's the whole kit there. Instructions, you've got thread. You've also got the actual thread to sew with, along with the embroidery. And can I just show you up close the beautiful ribbon that you get with this? Now, you get three metres of this one. Look how pretty that is. Your beautiful gingham. Lovely. So that's your red option. Then over here, you've got your grey option. This is the one uh, that we've got on the tree that you've seen. So you've got red thread here. That's your red thread. That's your grow grain. You've got four metres of that. I just love how it all ties together. And just even having the detailing uh, in there that you've got the stitching in there, beautiful. Uh, and then you've got your thread, of course, as well. And then you've got the two different fabrics that we've seen. So this beautiful Scandi fabric, there it is. Absolutely stunning and perfect. Perfect for this. Absolutely perfect. So that's 24 99 And then 
The one that we're working with today is, um, it's just a classic. Sometimes you just need a classic. It's never going to go out of fashion. It's never going to date. So this is your navy and white one. And again, we've managed to find that grow grain that just works perfectly with it there. Four meters of that. Your thread as well and your embroidery thread. And then half a meter of your blue, half a meter of your white. And you are good to go. 19.99 plus your instructions, plus your stuffing. So 19.99. So actually, if you are getting that today and then you're making a minimum of 12 birds. Just over a pound a bird, not bad, is it? Uh, here we go. We've also got some, some extra pom-pom trim because we thought that maybe you might want to do sort of a, well, do it from your, do it from your, you, you know, you could do your bunting from your pom-pom. So this one is your cream. We've got three different, uh, four different options. 2 99 for two meters of your cream pom-pom. Just looks like little snowballs, love that one. And then the green, ah, oh, the green looks amazing with grey. Let me show you this with the grey. Look how awesome that looks together. I do love it with the grey. So that's your pom pom in green. And then this is your grey. Amy, have we got some of these open that I can have a little, little play with? And then this is your red here. All of these is 2 .99. And you get two meters in there. They're just really great fun to play with. So whether you want to just add that little bit of extra detailing or whether you want that as your main bunting to hang your birds from, it's up to you. It's 2 .99. Right, Jess, have you finished stuffing? I have finished stuffing. So I've stuffed him firmly. Um, and Yeah, now how stuffed should he be? Personal preference. I tend to do it so you try and not have, have as many creases as possible. Um, so it's quite... F I kind of know that um, Jo, when she does her stuffing, she's a, they're really sort of very smooth. Yeah. With her lovely Robin, who's gorgeous. Um, so I tend to do that. Uh, but it's personal preference. I mean, obviously, the more stuffing you put in, the heavier it'll be. So you, when you've pinking sheared it, that helps to get yeah, that smooth it really does. edge. Yeah, because when you're actually pinking sheared, um, then when you're poking it out, obviously you, you poke these through with your Derek the Dob or whatever you're actually using. Because um, um, you pinked it, it's much easier to turn the curve out. Right. So what you actually have is you have your, your pigeon, right. your dove. Um, you put loads of, um, of your... This, this stuffing is, is, is really nice quality because when you actually sort of push it down, you lose the sort of the extra sort of fluff, which makes it much easier. I tend to stuff as much as I possibly can and then usually have a little bit of stuffing poking out and you can trim it off. But I'm just, just, just for, saying, for sort of so we can see better here, I'm just going to do it this. When I originally did this, I closed this with either a whip or a slip stitch, I can't remember, but I'm going to use a ladder snitch now. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to close him. So, and then we can talk about wings. I remember when I first started, um, when I first started slip stitching, trying to work out from various books and things how to do it. And it's quite, it was quite difficult to understand what, you know, the terminology that they were using, yeah. how they were describing it. So I love the fact we actually get to see it. Karen says, uh, oh no, Patricia says, good morning, Natasha, loving Jessica's doves, going to make them in the red spot. Can you oh, nice. uh, tell which cutting mat you are using, please, uh, says Pat. Yes, here we go. Cutting mat is on the screen for you. We, we go for the big one, don't we? Yeah, Every time. I love the big one. This is the A1 cutting mat because then it's the, the biggest surface. Yeah, when, I, I, use when I first started out, I had an A3. Um, and it, to be perfectly honest, it's only the last... When I started doing this, I thought, I'm going to need to get a bigger one. It's ridiculous when you're cutting things out and moving your mat along. I have not looked back on getting one of these. It's it just is perfect. a proper... Brilliant piece of kit. You've also got your bias binding two and a half inch guideline there. Yeah. Which and is of course great. it's double sided, so we have the centimeters on the yeah. other side. So depending on what project you actually have, I know quilters, we always use them um, this with our quarter inch and everything, but of course you just flip it over and you've got your centimeters. So it's brilliant. I absolutely love this. Right, this and now, a really long ruler. Show us your ladder stitch. Same so, stitch, ladder stitch, same ladder stitch. stitch. So I am, I'm just doing it quickly, so I'll. Probably, you tend to do it as close, uh, small stitches, okay? So what you do is you, you, poke, you, you put your, your, not the end of your thread, push it through um, one of your sort of openings, the, the other side, opposite to where you are. Then, you, so you put it out like this, 
Then you go over to the opposite side. Very difficult in white thread, isn't it? Should have done a darker thread. Um, though I know that I think um, Jennifer's done um, sort of tutorials as well, we'll hasn't she? We'll try and put that in so yeah, that you can, so you can see. see. So then... Um, so you cross over. So these cross are like over the, the, on the top. These are like the rungs of the ladder that yeah. go across. Cross over, go through, and then a few, about two or three millimetres across the other side, come out. Go back over to the other side and go through again. I hope you can see on this camera. And go through and just keep going up like that. And it's sort of, and then you'll be able to, you see it's like that. And then can you I, can. Yeah, can I just show, let me just, you just show this. You just close it like that. There you go. So here, if you can see, can you see here? There you go. There's, I don't know. Do you know what? We'll play the VT. We'll play the video clip on how to do a ladder yeah. stitch. Um, it, because then you, it won't be, you'll be able to see it. It's, you it's really nice when you're doing cuddly toys. I always used to use slip stitches, whip stitches, but I'm, I'm a really convert now for anything like this to a ladder stitch. It just makes it look so much neater, I think. So when you're grabbing your cup of tea in the break, just keep an ear out. If you need, to, if you need the ladder stitch tutorial, slip stitch, whatever you want to call it, that will play out in between shows. Yeah, it is really nice. I mean, I got the, uh, the latest Simply Sewing came out this week and I've done a sort of gift guide, I suppose. We've got projects for everybody. And one of the things I did was a, a giraffe rattle for your kitty winks, and that was close to the ladder stitch one. I can't remember if they put the photo in there. I'm not sure if they have, but you can it's see just, it It's just, for me, I need to see it. Reading it is, is one of those things oh, that I yeah. find really quite... That's why, it, yeah, images, I'm, I'm visual as well. I can actually work something out on the instructions has, that Because way. everybody has different terminology, and it's not necessarily how how I would say it. So yeah. for me, I need to see it. So we'll, we'll, we'll show that in the break. Okay, cool. Right, and then I'll just do this one. Oh, Director Tim says it'll be the first one as we come out of the oh, show cool. and into the break. He's already sorting it. He's on it this morning. He's oh, it's done. It. it's done. He's done. He's done it. It's all ready to go. Yeah, I think she's actually done it in, in, in sort of a uh, sewing colour embroidery thread as well, hasn't she? So you can really see, yeah. So there you are. Is it not particularly on camera. So that's that. And then you, you then finish it off, as in you need a double he's knot all, to yeah, poke, no, he's poke all... him through. And then you end up with... Da, da, da. Ah, oh, there he is. All done. All done. You may be wondering why I didn't just produce this, but you want to see how it's made. So there we have, look, we've got two doves. There, so he's all, he's all stitched up. Beautiful stitch. He should have been a surgeon. Thank you. Yeah. And there he is, ready to... Ready to add his wings. OK. The wings. Now, the wings. We've got... Um, you have your lovely wing template. Depending on how you actually want to do this, when I originally did this, I did... Um, indigo with a white on the other side so on these ones you've got um you've got your when did, hang on when did that happen i know amy just did it so you've got your it's lovely isn't it so you've got your your main fabric there and then on the the inside of the wing it's that fabric as well I, that's that's just the way i prefer to do it also with these wings the way they've been sewn come on again the way they've been sewn because they, you, you 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 make your wing and then you attach it um, and you sew through because it's just attached just there you can move the wings around oh wow which is you know you want them flying different directions and you can what i would say is because these were originally done in in denim which of course is a thicker fabric they're stiff anyway right um but these are done in all, uh, in our lovely ordinary cotton um which means that the wings are slightly floppier. So okay. what you can do is you can stuff them, and I'll show you what some of them actually stuff no, as well. No, I, I like this. They're I really like cute. Um, now, Nicola says she's, she's going to stay with a pal for four days of crafting. Brought this beautiful kit to share and make. Oh, Isn't that lovely? It's, it's a really... Oh, thank you. It's a really, it's a really nice thing to do as a group, actually. Because you, you make loads of... Imagine doing a tree, and you've got loads of different... And you can personalise them. I think it would be lovely on um, mantelpieces, things like that. Oh, yeah, like lovely ones. They look really yeah. cute. So, you put him to one side. Admire how gorgeous he is. Yes. Put him to one side. And time to do your wing. Okay. What we what originally did this, I actually did this with top stitch in the machine, but what I've done for these ones is I've used our lovely embroidery thread. Okay. So the embroidery thread which comes with this kit is white. So which of course will match nicely with the ribbon. So what I have done. Do you know what that's a great that is a great match, isn't it, between the, it the ribbon and the okay. and all the thread. Yeah. It's just gonna work a treat. Hang on, pop that back. There you go. Yes. So what I um, do now is I'm going to use 
I think Amy's gone to get me um, a white um, uh, marker, marker just, so, just so I can I can put the embroidery lines on, just so you can follow them. So, but just to sew them up, I'm just going to do it on white again, I think. So what I'll do is I'll just go into trace round. Oh, you need, um, obviously you need two pairs of wings, but I'm just going to do one because I've already prepared the others. Because he's going to go in circles. He's going to go in circles. So what you do is you, um, obviously with your one wing. One white marker. Oh, brilliant. Let's just look at that. Lovely, look at that. What you could do is you could actually do it now with it on white. First do it on white. So I'll just use this marker. You can see this this mark here is the actual wing placement mark. Oh, that's where that stitch yeah, goes that stitch, through. Yeah, so what I'll, and you put your embroidery thread marks on once your wing is sort of turned out and ready to, to um, add the um, detail, whatever you want, whether you want to stuff it, which I shall show you in a bit, or which I love the stuffed wings, has to be said. That's a really simple thing to do, and they look really cute. It looked massively effective when you showed me earlier. I was like, yeah. yes, that's the one. That's the one. It, it, it's just really pretty. I keep, I know I've said it before, but I keep thinking these look really nice as little hair slides. Imagine doing, oh, you remember you've got some, um, you've got the one over there, which has got the silver floss. That oh, would with the, really yeah, cute, with the catching red. the light. Well, I was looking at the fabric that you've got in with the red kit. Yeah. And you've got the Christmas tree, and I was thinking you could do little French knots up the Christmas tree oh, to have those Christmas really decorations. Pretty. Or you yeah. could do little um, embroidery swag so it looks like tinsel. Nice. That looked really cute. It's all in there, you it's see. It's all it just in depends there. which kit you're going for. Um, we generally have uh, silver a bit of pink and blue. Oh, and, nice. Yeah. What, aqua? But, yeah, 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 yeah. The classic aqua. Yes. And, um, and so I was okay. just thinking... Transfer it again. Mm, the grey would be the best, the best fit in our house. Gr oh, the grey would look yeah, the really, oh, gray. Look really pretty. Yeah, I, I, um, when that arrived, I, I must admit, I went, ooh, and the kids came out. What, what's, what, you know, oh, is it another box of fabric? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seriously, this is really good. So you have your, your wing like this, and then again, you place it on top of your backing fabric. I'm sure I can see, might be a little bit closer so I can see. Well, I might actually be more intelligent. And get a, bit of pe a bigger piece of lovely backing fabric. Again, you've got so much in your and kit. Look, isn't that really pretty of the red yes. as well, if you want both? Yes. Okay, so I'll just use a bit of this one. You see, you get loads left over. I mean, I've obviously just done samples, but it just gives you an idea how much fabric you actually get. It's a lovely blue. Look at us, we, we all match, don't we? we? All yeah, we're all merging together. There we go. That's a subconscious merging. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to pin that. That's your turning up again. Right. And just stitch, and you just make it exactly the same way you did your burn. Stitch all the way around, trim, and turn it out. So I'll just do that. We do, we've got plenty of time, haven't we? Yes. Oh, that's fine. In that case, I will right. make a wing. Yay. So we have nine minutes together. Oh, that's fine then. So um, what, what I would say is this, this kit um, doesn't come with um, embroidery thread with eyes because eyes, you can do whatever you want. We were talking, I think, a few we days ago. We were talking about, about sequins, sequins or gems. Sure, or, or we might want to do little beads or whatever. So because we, I, we decided in the end that I just used some plain black embroidery floss. So that's uh, what I've got done that. with those. So if you want to add that in, do you know what? It's not going to break the bank. <sighs> I think it's coming in at about a pound. Oh, well, that's, yeah. Oh, even less, 99 pence. Look at me exaggerating a whole new English pound. 99 <laughs> pence. Get that penny back. What I ended up doing, because I, I actually did mine um, last night in the hotel room, finished off. I cut a piece of embroidery thread, because it's six strands, that long, and, and used two lots, three strands, and had loads left over, and I did Done. all six doves. So you, 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 you hardly need any. It might be. I mean, the other reason that we didn't add it on is because if you've got any of the other animal kits that we've done, invariably they oh, come yeah. with some with a black skein. And there's a lot in there. There's like eight metres in there. So Yeah, you don't need much, do you? The original ones I made, I actually did them with little black beads for eyes, which look really cute. I'm quite enjoying the thought of a sequin. A sequin would look really sweet, wouldn't it? Or you could have a little... How do you... I suppose you could stitch it on with, with black embroidery thread so it's got a little eye point. You could. Just to give it that extra depth for your animal. I mean, it's becoming, it's, it's becoming a... <laughs> Director Tim says that he would have a pirate one with an eye patch. Oh, I like that. A pirate with an eye patch. Yeah, because you could personalise them, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. You could import... Oh, can imagine, imagine doing a little gold crown. That oh. would look mad, because we have that gold um, PU, don't we? We had that on yesterday. Yes, the plethora, as we like to call it. Plethora, yes. 
Because that, that would actually look really pretty, making or little gold wings. Oh, that would look really cute. We had gold and silver pleather yesterday. Oh, no, that would look... You've got, you've got your silver skein as well. There you go. Job there done. You are, job done. Right, right yeah. seven minutes left. That's right. In that case, I will... I can always do my... Here's one I did earlier. Let me know when we need to get that up point. So, I'll just... Now, do you um, pinking shear again? Yes. Okay. Let's trim there. So it's on the curvy bit that you get the pinking shear. On the shear curvy out. bit. And then I'll show you how I mark. And then we can show you the different sort of wing options. Because it's the thing about, about something like this. It's, it's all personal taste. You might decide you want to do it, follow the instructions exactly to the letter as per the pack or uh, alter and it. you've got that option. Yeah, because there's so much fabric. And there's, there is a lot of, of stuffing. I mean, I had, you get that pack... I end up, bearing in mind, I've stuffed a couple of birds through here as well. That's what's left. Oh, gosh, it's like you've hardly, it's like you've hardly broken into yeah, it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's just there's loads of it. It's, um, so you're just thinking, I don't want to make six, I want to make loads. So here we have our, our lovely wing. Now, Julie says, uh, good morning, Jess. I made something similar last year. Nine doves on a circular wreath, all going in one direction. It was lovely. Oh, nice. Perfect. Oh, on a circular wreath. Oh, that would look lovely, because you could scale them down and make little ones, couldn't oh, you? Yes. Oh, that would look really cute. So I'm just turning it round, and then we will um, see what they look like. May I have the, uh, the irons on now, isn't it? Yes. Because then I'll just um, press this one, because I need to press the other one, because I was ready. So what I would say, when you're sewing this, because you've got lots of curves, use small stitch in your sewing machine. Make sure it's two or oh, one really? and a half. Oh, really? Yeah, don't, don't use um, big ones, because otherwise you may um, end up ripping when you stuff and things. I always forget to do things like that. Now you, now you say it's like, yes, of course, of course, it's so obvious. Um, Big stitches for quilting, small stitches for this, things like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So carefully, so you don't go through stitching, so many times you go through your stitching. Also, because this is an erasable pen, this one, when you actually have finished, when you finish, that's when you actually remove your mark to a bit of water. Okay. And it's, it's really satisfying, because you think you look, look, look a little bit dirty, and then you remove all the marks, it looks really cute. Now Victoria wants to know, can she just get the pattern book on its own? No, don't it's think in a so. kit. No, because it's, a, it's, it's all, now it's all kitted so that you, you are ready to go. Because there's nothing worse there than getting stuff and then not having what you want ready to go. So, no, it's, it's all coming as a kit today, Victoria. So, there we are. Now, we'll just give them a quick press and then we'll show you how this... Then it's them however you want to do your wings. So, because we're going to follow the original uh, way... Give that a little bit of a... Slightly neater way look. Because we're going to follow the, the original instructions, we're going to mark um, on the indigo... Right. ..the actual embroidery marks. OK. You could also, if you preferred, use the same white thread and go around once or twice and do your marks that way. So, oh, OK. So yeah. we have options. You have options. Now, are we doing a stuffed wing or a flat wing? Well, I'll show you how we do the mark round here because I've already got them prepared, so we can. I'll, I'll bring them out in a sec. Got four and a half minutes. That's fine. Okay. In that case, what I do is at this point, um, that's you follow your your little design in the book, which I know off by heart, so I don't need to worry about that. Or you can have a look at your pattern and you think, okay, I can't see where that mark is, so I'll just go like this. And then you draw all the way around, about two or three millimeters in, depending what your personal preference is, your stitch lines. If you want, you can follow it completely from the pattern. Yeah. So whatever you want. Also, because you've got... Um, you're going to stitch close to here, this will close the turning gap. You don't need to... You can if you want to, but I've never actually bothered um, stitching that closed by hand. Oh, really? Hand. Yeah, you don't need to because you're, you're showing close to the end. And ah. because it's ironed and pressed, it'll, it'll close. So you go like that, all the way around. And then you... Where you're, this mark is where the actual... It's actually stitched into the wing. Yep. You draw a line from... From there. So does it all come out from that central? Yeah, from the centre point, just like that. Oh, nice. You see like that? And those are your stitch lines. So then you use whatever you actually want to. If you want to use um, your uh, white thread in the sewing machine and just go round, mm -hmm. you can. Um, you can go round like twice. Like a top stitch. Like a top stitch, yeah. Or you could um, use the embroidery thread and do a running stitch, yes. which I've gone prep for before. What are you going to do? Well, I have done... How long have I got? Four minutes. I have done three running, minutes. Three minutes. I have done running stitches, so I've already done my wings. So I'll show you what I've actually done. Is let's find them. Where they all gone? Here we go. So here we I go. I like how many wing options we have here. So there. 
Because oh, you, don't forget, you need to make not. a pair. So you need to make yes. two, and they need to be a pair. And they need to go in opposite directions. So, so that's the running stitch. just running stitch along yeah. where, where that From, was. Start at that point, go around. And then when you sort of, um, you, 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 I start at one point and go all the way around. Yeah. And then I go down one line, and then I, between the two layers of fabric, go underneath, then out through this point, and then down again to there. And then you just double up. Because you're not going to see this, this point. This point can be messy, because this point's going to be sewn into your bird like that. Well, so you're not going to see it. Well, says it looks almost Sashko-esque. It does look Sashko-esque. Yeah, yeah, because of the colouring. So when that's on your bird... Yeah. So then you... I'll show you the other wing option in a second. I'll show you how you stitch those on. Doesn't that just transform him completely? And because I've done it this way around, you could if you wanted to. You might want to do white wings like that with it on the inside. No, I love the, I love the brown... Uh, the I love wings. the contrast. Yeah, it works really well. Yeah, that's what it's all about for me. Because that's Fab. That. And then you, I'll stitch those on in a second. So I stitch those on with the same colour. Whatever thread you're actually using, you stitch those on with the same thread. So I'll show you that in a minute. But what I did, and I might do with this one very quickly, is I ended up creating a pair of stuffed ones. I love the stuffed ones. There you go. And I'll show you how to do it in a second with this one. Oh, producer one. Paul, who has been very quiet because he's been watching this hour, uh, says you need to check out your baskets. Don't miss out on these. Check out those baskets. Make sure that you've got the wings that you want. The wings that you want, the birds that you want, the kits that you want. But look, oh, look at, at those. These. They're really, oh. really nice. This is why I was thinking hair slides. Yeah, little I girls, see, yes. little wings, or you can on your collars, little brooch. Look at that. Isn't one. that cute? Little brooch. That would be yes. really cute. Because you can do whatever you want. And this this one, I, I'll show you. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to do it on this one, actually. I'll show you how you do it. So with this one, um, what I did, or obviously I used the white, um, I stuffed a very small amount of stuffing. So I'll just grab a very small amount. You don't need a huge amount. You can if you We've want to. We've got about really 30 fat. seconds. So. Oh, that's fine. So what I did was I just stuffed, I mean, look, hardly oh, any. It's a tiddly tiny amount. Tiddly amount. It? Push it in like this. And then use your stick to sort of fiddle it about a bit, as it were. Make it nice. Spread and it around. Spread it around. So it's fairly equal. And then you take it to your sewing machine and follow the same, obviously you've already marked, follow the same lines all the way around and up and down, and that will give you your padded shape. Fabulous. Okay, and then we're going to sew more. You could use your free motion embroidery. You could, yeah, you, you could do whatever you it. want. Uh, right, so then sew the wings on. So yep. which, one, which one do you want me to sew on? Uh, we are pretty much out of time, so if you want to just stitch those on... I'll stitch those on, and then, just and then the eyes. Like, yeah, I'll just talk about the eyes very quickly. So you just thread some black embroidery thread, whatever you're going to do, and just do a you know, few stitches, make a little circle there, through the other side, circle there, finish it off, pull your thread out, snip it off, and you're done. Done. Perfect. And then, of course, you attach it, however you actually want to, on your string. Yay! Yay. Fabulous. Yes, thank you. That's OK. And uh, now you're going to be back in an hour. I am. I'm going to use some white ones. Yes, in an hour. Uh, doing placemats. Doing placemats. And um, a table a runner. A table runner. But all festive. Yes. It's funny, isn't it? It's all about that, that, that table, isn't it, at Christmas? Yeah. You know, that beautiful table. Right, so we will be back with Jess in an hour's time. But let's have a look at these, uh, the kits. Thank okay, you. Okay, no worries. Beautiful. You. Absolutely lovely. So, let's start with the grey. This has been incredibly popular this morning. So this is the one that Jess made her samples out of. Lots of you with this in your baskets. Please check them out. Make sure you don't... Oh, I don't want disappointment this morning. That would be awful. Uh, so a beautiful project, one that you can do alone. I love the idea that um, one of you emailed in saying, yes, I was going to uh, take this with my friend and uh, have, have a few days making things with my friend. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. So that's all that you're getting in there. Full instructions and your stuffing, and your thread, and your embroidery skein, and your ribbon, and, 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 and. It's all in there. Fabulous. Now, the red, the red one has got this beautiful, and we've not seen this on air before, silver skein, which I just think is stunning. Um, and you've also got uh, three metres there of that. You need to check out your baskets, and you've got your thread but then that's half a metre of each of those. This is producer Paul's favourite, I think, today. And then we've got the blue, which is what we've been working with today. Now, the blue is limited stock now, so if you're after the blue, please, again, check out those baskets. Whoop! Please check out your baskets, make sure that it doesn't go, uh, go running off like it's trying to do with me. So, embroidery skein, thread there. 
and of course your lovely grow grain ribbon there, four meters of that, and then half a meter of your blue, half a meter of your white, but it's a classic. I, I hate it when you have to take your decorations down and it all feels a little bit bare, but if you've got it in the white and the blue, you don't have to take it down. You can keep it up. We've had some lovely images through. Ooh, what have we got? Show me, show me what we got. Oh, we've got these. Oh. Oh, I, yes. Now, I asked for your Christmas makes. You've not let me down. Look at this. Here they are. Oh, look. Oh, look what producer Paul has done. He's even put names on. Fiona, her. Oh, look at that. Now, you see, this is it. The quilting on white is a new thing for me, and I think that's absolutely stunning. Um, Susie, Susan, rather, fabulous. Lovely stocking that's going to be kept for years and years and years. Is that a nice stuffed Christmas tree? Yeah, beautiful. Annie, I recognise that. Beautiful. And then what, what's Jill made? Oh, it's a brooch. Is it a brooch? Yeah, a Christmassy brooch. Fabulous. You're a clever lot out there. What a clever lot. Now, check out your baskets. Don't, don't miss out. Now, after the break, Christmas continues here on Sewing Quarter. We've got some brand new fabrics for you, uh, which are all Christmas themed. So if you're after that little bit of festive spirit, then join us in just a few moments. Now, don't forget, of course, we told you that the very, very first video that we'll show you as soon as we go to the break is that slip stitch or ladder slitch or stitch, whichever you want to call it. So if you wanted to see exactly how to do that, because it was difficult with the white thread, um, then stay tuned. Don't quite go for your cup of tea yet. Stay with us uh, to watch that. But then after the break, brand new fabrics, ready for Christmas, coming up. So do grab your tea, but not quite yet. And I'll see you in just a moment. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. So I'm going to be showing you how to do a ladder stitch. Now this is a great stitch when you want to sew something up and create an invisible stitch. Now first of all, I'm just going to use the example of something like a pincushion, but I need to bring these two edges together using the invisible stitch, which is known as the ladder stitch. So first of all, I'm going to take my needle up through the fold. So I'm going to be concealing the knot in the thread. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle in through the fold of the fabric come out. So you can see that I'm on the actual fold there, so obviously there's the, the raw edges are inside my pincushion. I'm going to take that through. Now I'm going to go to the opposite side and repeat that stitch. So I want to make sure that this is parallel. So I'm going to come in through that fold and come out. So again I'm making these stitches really big so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see how I'm going across the whole of the fabric. If I just keep doing a few stitches. So as you can see, we have the ladder stitch there going across the two pieces of fabric. So when I pull my thread, you can see that almost makes those stitches invisible. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Join us on Saturday the 4th of November when we'll be joined by House of Alistair owner Alistair MacDonald. Alistair's love of Liberty Fabric and experience working in women's fashion sparked the elusive House of Alistair and his range of fabulous fabric and haberdashery products, some of which we'll be sharing with you on Saturday. There will be fun, frolics and fabulous fabric, so don't miss Alistair MacDonald's debut shows on Saturday the 4th of November at 9am and 11am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts.
Hello, welcome back. Now, I promise you brand new Christmas fabrics. So this hour, you've got me, Natasha McCarthy, and brand new Christmas fabrics, starting with, well, you know I'm going to love this one, uh, because check it out. Yes. Look at the price, first of all, and then look at the, look at this. $3.99 for your dogs on grey. Just gorgeous. So if you've got a little Scotty dog or you just love dogs, then this is the one for you. Or maybe you're making a stocking for your dog because that is a thing too. Yes, it is. Did you suppose like what? You make stockings for your dogs? Yes, we do in our house. Uh, here we go. More stockings. Is this brand new as well? You have to excuse me, I've got a really sore throat today, so I've got a throat sweet in. So if you hear a bit of, um, yeah. $3.99 for your Christmas stockings on cream. Lovely tradition. Actually, they look really nice and warm and woolly, don't they? Mmm. What we'll do is we'll whiz through them and then we'll go back and take a closer look. Okay, because look, I've got a whole great big stash again. Uh, now, stockings on green next. So you can make your stockings out of your stockings. See what I mean? There you go. It's okay. Wow, fabulous prices. Three ninety nine L W J Q seventy nine. Look, if you can't remember these randomly generated codes, then um, all you need to do is just zip onto the website underneath where you watch this live, and they're all listed there. It's like a personal shopping list. Now, but another brand new one. Stockings in red. Why not? So whichever colour suits you, or maybe you have an awful lot of grandchildren to make stockings for. Same but different, isn't it? It's very important. We've got um, cameraman Mike with us today, who is expecting his uh, third child today, in fact. It's due today. So same but different. Very important with three children, isn't it? Yes, he's saying yes. Uh, this is, here we go, your last of the stockings. But this is on silver. So that's brand new in today as well. Loving that one. They just look super warm, don't they? Right. Okay. Mm. Ooh, look at this. Kind of keeping with that Scandi vibe that we had from the last show. I love this. Oh, yes. Isn't that pretty? Hey, if you are English paper piecing, mm-hmm. Yep, you know what I'm going to say. Brilliant for fussy cutting. 3 49 there for your red Scandi decorative snowflake fabric on Ecru. Mm. And then our last premiere... Canvas? Yeah. That's, is that? This is in ivory. Which is pretty hard to show because it's just, it's just white, basically. Uh, so you can't really see how exciting that is. But if you want that, uh, that heavier weight cotton canvas, we discussed yesterday why cotton canvas is so good. It's heavier weight, so you can use for um, what this is going to make. Maybe this is going to be the main body of your stocking. And then, do you want to, yeah, I don't know if you could, it's, it's beautifully textured. Let's see how close we can get. So somebody was asking the difference. And so you can see from these threads here where it's been cut, it is a much thicker weave. Well, it's, it's, it's a much thicker thread that's been woven. So it's all 100% cotton, but you've got that thicker thread, which is why it's a thicker, thicker canvas. So actually, if you're having to make big, sturdy stockings, it's the one. They are all brand new today. What do you want? What do you want done? Oh, let me let me just uh, make the dog nice and. There we go. Then they're all in order, ready for me to go through again. Right, so they're all brand new today. I'm trying to be organised today. Oh. I haven't seen all of these. I haven't seen all of these. These are fab. Let's start out with this one next then. So this is um, from Dashwood Studio. This is your festive friends. But it's, it's great, isn't it? Because you've got your gold... Is this premiere as well? I haven't seen this one, but I just assumed that John had had it or Amy had had it. Uh, it's from Dashwood Studio, so you know you're getting that lovely quality in that cotton. And then you've got that gold coming through in there as well. Fab. So all of these available by the half metre. Uh, all you need to do is just decide how much you want. 
one unit is half a meter, two units is a meter, and it'll get cut in one continuous length. I haven't seen this either. Love this. Now, premiered by the half meter today, brand new by the half meter today. Look at this. Now, I was saying earlier, wasn't I, that we have uh, a lot of pink in our house for Christmas, so this one will be perfect. So if you are, if I put it next to the red, then you can see that clash. This is pink. It says, it says red print, but it's, it's, it's pink. That's how it looks under these lights. Fab. Lovely. So we've got that. Oh, animal lovers, beware. Cute zone coming up. Look at these festive cats from Dashwood. Then were they? Uh, is that bubbles or is it martini? What are they having? Then there's um, yeah. Well, it could be like one of those old-fashioned champagne glasses. You know how they used to do the, the champagne towers and just pour from the top, and it would all. Tuk, 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 tuk. And oh, they. We'll look at that more closely. They've got crackers and everything. Oh no, I have seen this one. Have you seen this one, Producer Paul? Yeah, this isn't new, but it is lovely. Look at that. Look at his antlers. And you've got owls. You've got all sorts going on. This is very busy fabric, but it's Christmas busy. It's good, absolutely fab. Maybe that's gonna be the main body of your uh, stockings. Or maybe you're gonna fussy cut and applique some of those. That'd be lovely. Oh, ah, now, yeah. This is Guiding Star. This is a real heavyweight fabric. This is your linen look fabric. And um, this is gonna be great. If you're having to do sort of a Christmas sack, then this is the one. This is a real heavyweight, good, heavy duty fabric. But it also, it, it's, it's soft. So don't think it's not soft just because it's, um, it's linen look. Uh, and it's a, and it's a heavier weight fabric, four ninety nine per half a meter. Yeah, that's what I'll be making my stockings out of. Definitely. Oh, everyone loves a happy Santa. There he is. And this would work for me for Christmas as well because we have pink and turquoise an awful lot. Sort of your aqua. There he is. That's your Santa head. Ah, oh, now, uh, Director Tim said he, that they've got um, a pillow with this on, this sort of thing. 5 99 per half a metre. Is that... Oh, the pillowcase is 26 years old. Hey, and out it comes every year. Do you stuff it with presents? Oh, you just have it on your pillow just for Christmas. So sweet. Hello, sparkly fabric. Mmm, look at that. So Christmas baubles, but with actual sort of sparkly gold bits on. It's not actual gold, but look, it's actual sparkly. That's fab. That's going to catch the light beautifully. Fabulous. 5 99 per half a metre on that one too. Let me shimmy that down. Oh, yeah, classic candy cane. I don't know if you can even get candy canes at any other time of the year. You shouldn't be allowed to, should it? It should be law that candy canes can only come out for Christmas. But there they are, your candy canes on red from small things at Christmas. So five ninety nine there. They are all your traditional Christmas sweets, aren't they? Apart from they haven't popped in the old... Uh... Well, in our family, in our family, also Turkish delights are quite Christmassy as well. Ah, now, oh, here we go. Now, this is the last of the Christmassy fabrics. But we've got fabrics that you can mix and match coming up in just a moment. So five ninety nine gives you your little soldiers. Great for those little chaps in our lives. There it is. Yes, five ninety nine per half meter. I'm going to sneeze. Achoo, excuse. Ah, oh, the joy of the cold. Ah, now here we go. Here we've got. Wait, well, it's. A, your navy just works in well, doesn't it, with all of these? So if you're look, for example. Uh, that isn't your canvas, that's just normal. I don't, that's not a canvas one. Yeah, that's not, that's not the cotton canvas in Navy, that's just our normal Macau. We, we're missing the cotton canvas in Navy. 
Let's look at the other ones then. It will be any minute. Okay, so uh, red is next. Now we had these on the show yesterday. If you missed them, they were incredibly popular because look at that price, 365. So again, maybe this is gonna be the main body of your, um, of your bags, of your stockings, because again, it's real heavy duty. So hang on, Tim, we discussed earlier how old you were off air, didn't we? And um, 27 which means that actually his pillow has been coming out for 27 years. That's what you're making when you're making these stockings. You're making something to come out every single year. This goes beautifully with, um, with, the, with the marching men. We'll take a look. We'll match these all up. Let me just give you all the details because you can't buy until we're giving you the details. So 365 in duck egg. There it is. M-A-J-Q 87. And that's 365 per half a metre. Now we've also got, oh, well, mix and match these through. You see, I'd be tempted to do um, stockings and then do sort of a feature trim. So this is fuchsia. And again, 365 per half a metre. It's a fabulous price and lovely fabric to work with. Get your pinking shears out on this, though. Right, next is, ah, uh, yes. Here we go. This is, this is uh, the closest that we've got to sort of traditional Christmas sack coloured. So this is it in beige. And that's 365. BTJQ05. And then here, now what colour are we calling this? It's sort of, it is air crew. It's, but it's kind of, it feels very natural, sort of natural fibres through there. It's not just a flat colour. So 365 for your cotton canvas in air crew. This hasn't been on since July, so this, is, this has been hiding away in the warehouse. So lovely to have that back on the show today. And we'll match through and see what works with what in a moment. Now, the next one is black. Do you know what? Yes, we had the cotton canvas on the show yesterday, but we didn't have all of these. Didn't have all these at all. So this is your black cotton canvas. This was super popular yesterday. 365, we had this on a bag show, but actually bags, stockings, same, same. PWJQ69, you want it to hold a lot of stuff. Yeah. And then, oh, you see, we didn't have the pink on yesterday, did we? Very pretty. So the next one is your, is your pink. It's a very, it's almost dusky, this pink. It's a very pretty pink. It's not a sickly one. It's a very, very pretty, delicate pink. So there it is, 365. There we go. That's that. We can't do it. We did that one earlier. There we are. But da And we'll get you the navy in just a moment. So that's all the fabric that we've got on this hour. Most popular so far. No surprise. It's the dogs. So here we go. What a fabulous fabric. There it is. They are sort of Scotty-esque, aren't they? But to be honest, they're fab. So you've got, they're quite, they've got quite an inquiring, inquisitive little look there. Like, is that turkey coming in my bowl for me to eat or not? What's going on there? 3.99, NXJQ06. Look at that. He's absolutely gorgeous. Should we see what we can mix and match him in with? Have a play. No. You've got um, you've got red with your yes, yeah, so same red there. That's yeah. Mm. I might go. Produce Paul. I think I might go for just a plain a plain canvas. Yeah, I'm going to go. I think that's too much. Too much. Too much. Uh, there we go. We'll match the canvases and then we'll go through each of the uh, each of the patterns. So that you see, imagine that as a beautiful stocking, and then you've got the top with the dogs going around the top. Wouldn't that be lovely? Or maybe you want to line it. Yeah, that works. That's what I'd be doing. Fabulous. May well be doing. Come on. Uh, right. Producer Paul doesn't have, doesn't have pets. So he doesn't, he doesn't understand. He just thinks I'm a little bit crazy. So he may have a point. 
But hands up, how many of you, or message in, how many of you get stockings and things for your pets at Christmas? It's a thing. It is a thing. Yeah, cameraman Mike is going, yeah, it's a thing. It is a thing. Um, and what do you do? What do you make for your pets at Christmas? All of ours have um, either stockings or treats or something at Christmas. It's got to be done. You can't leave them out at Christmas. They'd be sad. Yeah. Uh, so that's your dog fabric there. Very, very popular. Lots of you with it in your baskets. You know what we're going to have to say. If it's in your basket, please check out. It is available by the half metre. Can I just say, actually, out of all these fabrics, this is so super soft. I would be very tempted, because that is so soft, to make Christmas pyjamas out of it. Can you imagine Christmas pyjamas out of that? It would be amazing. Even producer Paul, who doesn't have dogs because he's allergic, would wear that. You wouldn't be allergic to this, it'd be fine. How wide is it, actually? This is um, Rose and Hubble fabrics. How wide is it? That is, I'm going to measure it. Because if I'm making pyjamas out, I have to say it's super, super soft. Let's just measure this. Should we do it in uh, centimetres? Yeah, do you see? I'd whip that tape measure out. Oh, it is, you see, perfect for your dressmaking. That's 147 centimetres wide. Nice, nice. Next most popular are your silver stockings. Now, I do know that we went very, very quickly when we started out. So now we're gonna have a little recap. So time to sit back and ah, relax. Again, I'm gonna bring it out again because that red canvas just works beautifully. Yes, yes. Do you want to see how that pattern repeat happens? Let's have pictures of what you make for Christmas. We've already had some amazing ones. But if you've got pattern fabrics and things like that, or ideas, just message in what would you be making with all of these? What are you going to get making? Look at that together. Yes, that's it. There it is. That's good, isn't it? It does pick out that red beautifully. Now, yeah. We did have, i tell you what else would work with this. And we had it because it was brand new today. And that's the, um, the ivory. Oh, the ivory is incredibly popular. But just look, if you wanted to pick out the ivory that's in the stockings, so you'd be picking out then all of your snowflakes and your, your fluffy tops on the top of your stockings. So if you want, again, grandchildren, same but different. Do them one a stocking um, in your uh, ivory canvas, one in the red, and then you could do the top round the top in your stocking fabric. I just, I, I think for me, because it, we, we've had the same stockings in our family just all our lives. So my brother's in his 40s, and we've just always had them, always had them. Uh, so it's just for me, it's, it's, it's that heirloom thing is that they come out every single year. So I just think it's really important that everyone should have one. And you can make them and you can embroider them. We had, um, when somebody emailed in their picture earlier, uh, it was embroidered with Rosie. It was Susan had Rosie written on. And I'm guessing that's going to be a grandchild or a daughter or something. Fabulous. Now let's have a look at this ivory. What, mm, what can I match it with? So this is the ivory, very, very popular, brand new today. And I'm just, I'm quickly scanning everything on the desk going, oh, go with that, go with that, go with this, go with that. So I'll have a go through and I will show you, but this is your canvas. So it's a real heavyweight fabric. And you can, yeah, you can, you can sort of see, can't you? You can just, Start to see that texture in there. So 365 per half a metre, great value. Lucy and Dawson says, Morning, Tasha, loving the programme. Busy making my stocking bunting while watching. Please may you say hi to Hattie and Ozzy, because they're watching. Hello, Hattie and Ozzy. Morning. Um, 
Thank you ever so much for, uh, for telling us what you're making. Stocking bunting. Fab. Next most popular is your scenic Christmas. I want to say that's this one down here. Yay! Oh, now with this one, I would be putting either the air crew or the beige with it. So if I just wipe, put those down there and then I can open it up against it and then we can see everything there. Here we go. Yes, it's a great scene. There's even a bit of gold through this. So that's your scene. Busy, isn't it? There's lots that you can applique on there, fussy cut. Or just use it as is. Maybe that's going to be part of your Christmas tablecloth. I don't know. But again, if you're using this with the canvases, this is where we try and remember all of the, uh, all of the reindeer names and get a bit stuck. If I pop that uh, at a jaunty angle across there, then we can start to see that actually it's going to work with your beige, your ecru and your red. Yeah. So whichever one of those you want to go for with your canvases, those are the ones that, that go. Uh, the ivory is too white, in my opinion, because you've got that lovely soft background there and that's what the ecru uh, picks out. And then you've got sort of your natural deer colour there or, of course, your traditional Christmas red. Perfect. Oh, now, Christmas stockings on red. Let's have a look at that. I do like a bit of Christmas. What's your favourite thing about Christmas? Producer Paul, what's your favourite thing about Christmas? He doesn't have a favourite thing about Christmas. Oh, food. Oh, I didn't hear food. It's fair enough. Absolutely fair enough. Now, I... Ooh, ooh, which canvas? Which, which, which? Here we go. This is the one. Hee hee. Yeah, so it's one of those things is that sometimes you need to see the fabric from a, a way off to see, and then you can come in for the detail. So you can see there's some great detail there. It's a lovely pattern. And then up close, you've got all that detail. They look really warm. They, they just, you, they look, it looks like you could touch them and they would be super warm and cosy. So almost sort of 3D-esque look about it, feel about it. Oh, it's, it's time, isn't it, for those warm, those warm winter boots. And, uh, and Nordic type socks as well. Now, I would go with this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 your ivory with that. The ivory works beautifully with that. Um, if we had the navy to hand, is that coming on its way? Then uh, that, would, that would work because you've got your navy in there as well. Is that a grey or is that a blue in there? What do you think? No, don't like that with it. There you go, ivory. Definitely your ivory. Yes. Picks it up, doesn't it? I'm... Mm. Oh, decisions, decisions. How's my turn? Uh, Sean, hello, Sean. She says, morning, Tash. Now, Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. Um, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donna and Blitzen. There you go. Love, Sean. Well done, you. Some people just know. I, it's eluded me. I never remember. It's like, the, um, it's like the little poem that you're meant to learn for the, days, for the number of days in the month. I can never remember that either. Uh, fabulous. Right, there we go. That's your stockings. Thank you, Sean, for that. I'm going to have to learn, isn't it? Now, now I'm a mum, I'm going to have to learn these things, I think. Um, you see, is it too early? We know it's Christmas in our house when Elf comes out, when, the, when we start watching the movie. Which one am I looking at next, Bruce Paul? The bauble. Oh, what, the, um, the, spa the sparkly baubles. Here we go. Uh, now, this works a treat, actually, with the scenic one. Whee! How 
far off do you need to be before you can pick up the sparkle? Can you, you, and then you can kind of see, can't you? Now I had this last in September. It's been a little while, hasn't it? There it is. Fab. So five ninety nine. Can I show it you with the? Um, mm. Oh, here we go. Now, here you can see down there all the colours. And you see that there's the there's the gold sparkly one, number eleven. Yeah. So we've got that. Um, but on the scenic one, you see, because it's out of the same range. Where is it? Here we go. So this is, can you see you've got so many similar colours? And this is always, always look at your salvage. Always look at your salvage. So again, you've got the matching gold, gold there, gold there. But then you've got a lot of colours similar there that you can use. So these are from the same range, I do believe. So you could use those together, maybe. If you wanted... Okay. It's soft. Do you know what the... Nah, hang on. Let's, let's just be really clear on this. Just because this has got uh, that metallic look to it, doesn't, it's still beautifully soft. Okay, so I don't want you to think that that's going to be rough to touch like some are. No, no, no. This is beautifully soft still. So you can still do this for your cushions, for your doves, for your everything else. Anything that you want or your um, quilts or anything like that that you want, you're absolutely fine with this uh, because it's still really lovely and soft. And again, you can see the detailing um, in this one. You've got just a little bit of the... I'm trying to get it so you can see the gold in his antlers. Can you see the gold? But again, it's soft. So don't think that because it's got that metallic in either one of those fabrics that it's going to, you know, it's sometimes a bit crusty. No, 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 it's not. This is absolutely beautifully soft. Perfect. Uh, so they are both from Macawa, I believe. So there you go. Beautiful. You could use those together and then it looks like the bauble. Yeah, no, they are. They're the baubles. Oh, look, yeah, no, that's the same bauble that you've got in there. There you go. They're made to go together. Perfect. Now, stockings on green. Let's have a look at the stockings on green. I don't think it's wrong to make a stocking out of a stocking, if you see what I mean. Hmm. No. So lovely to have your messages in, by the way, to let me know what you're doing with all these fabrics. So we've got lots of bunting. Bunting things seems to be the thing at the moment. Stockings on green. Here we go. Or cream. Did you say green or cream? Green. I'm just all a bit bunged this morning. So uh, here we go. Oh, nice. That is Christmas green, isn't it? That's what any green at Christmas should be, that lovely deep green. Yes. Now, if you want the ivory linen, uh, linen canvas, you could use, or the red. There you go. Either of those, gonna work a treat. There. So I can see, I can see the, the picture that's coming, you see. There you go. Should we just, shall I basically tell you when the, the, the ivory wouldn't be appropriate because it's a softer colour? Shall I do that? Because I know sometimes the white can be a bit bright on your screen. Right, so there's the red looking lovely with the green. That's just Christmas, isn't it? Christmas, done. 3 99 what a great price. LWJQ79. Woohoo! There it is. Oh, I was just going to just pop that there. So you get the two-tone. Yes. Now, as I did think that you said cream, let's get that one out next, shall we? Yee. Here it is. I'm going to pop that one straight down over the top of the red. Fab. I do I could play like for hours, just seeing what goes with what, what works, what goes. 
There you go, that's your cream with the red, just picking it up beautifully. Lots of you with it in your baskets, please check them out. 3 99 brand, brand new today. That's what we like. New fabrics. How many new ones do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six or so new fabrics. Yeah. Oh, yes. Because um, that's the thing, isn't it? Sometimes you don't... If I want something to last, I don't necessarily put fur on it or faux fur or anything like that. So I would maybe do the main body of my stocking out of the canvas, nice and sturdy, and then do a feature top. I want to show this because it's beautiful. It's one of our other premieres, producer Paul. It's your Scandi on Ecru. Is it on Ecru? Can't remember now. But we, we all went ooh and ah quite a lot of this. It's a, it's a grown up fabric, isn't it? This is going to stand the test of time. Loads in the basket with this. I knew you'd love this one. Absolutely knew you would. We've got some English paper piecing on our last hour and this would be perfect for it. So a fussy cut for your English paper piecing would just be gorgeous. Brand new today, £3.49, XPJQ79. That's the one, isn't that gorgeous? But, yeah. This feels quite wide, actually. Yeah, look at that. So from afar, beautiful, and then you get in for the detail, stunning. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, this is crying out for something like English paper piecing or, or any of your um, any of your decorations. It's a winner, isn't it? Maybe but you bought the red kit earlier out of the Scandi kit. Pop a half a meter of this in as well. Yeah. But you know, I said that I would go through which of the canvases really go. You've got the red, but you've also got the beige and the ecru working beautifully with that. So you could go for any of those. It gives a kind of a more rustic -y feel, but I like that. I like that a lot. That's a really usable one. Yeah, and it's not going to date. It's not going to go out of fashion. And no one's going to go, oh, this year, pfft, snowflakes. How about? Oh, I did actually read this morning that they think that we might have... Uh, a white Christmas. They say that every year, don't they? So many of you have got this in the basket. Look at the price, three forty nine per half a metre. Have we got multi-buyers on that, produce Paul? Yeah, lots of you multi-buying. I'm not surprised. That is utterly charming. I really like that. I really like that. And that is, um, that's, that's a lovely cotton, lovely white cotton there. Now, 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 I'm going to put that to one side, but please check out your baskets because that's going crazy. Now, if we're sticking with stars and snowflakes, then let's have a look at, um, at the guiding star. Now, this is a linen look. Again, we're looking at a heavier weight. If you've had any of our linen looks, you know, the ones with the, sort of the animal prints on and the, um, the, uh, the nautical things on, then this is from... The same range, so it's a linen look again, like the canvas. This is a larger weave, larger thread going through there. This is going to be great for the main body of um, a Christmas, Christmas present sack or a stocking or something like that. Or if you want to do cushions, or this is more hard wearing, so this isn't a quilting weight. I wouldn't be quilting or anything like that with this. This is more for your crafts. This is a craft weight. So 499 EMFG 73. You could do it for placemats, produce pool. Absolutely, you could do it for placemats. And look how lovely it is with all three of these. Yeah, you see, you've got you've got your air crew, which just lightens it a little bit. I like that. And it's feeling feels lovely and natural because you've got that linen and that canvas. It does feel really gorgeous. So I would possibly put it with that. You could, of course, go a tone darker and you could go with the beige. And of course, if you want to pick up the red, then the red canvas is there as well. Now, these are all 
kind of of a similar weight. I would say that the linen look is possibly ever so slightly heavier. But if I just show you those three together, I think any of those are going to work with this guiding star. And it's, I'm just having flashbacks to the first year. In fact, I think it was just before Freddie was born. Freddie's a January baby. He was meant to be born on January the 5th. Um, and so we were, we were ready just in case he came at Christmas and we had a stocking all ready for him. Of course he didn't. Um, and, uh, and you know, this is the kind of fabric that we had. Brilliant. Oh, I've got a stock warning. The dogs. Let's have a look at those dogs. Is the dogs running low already? No, really? Gosh, they are, they are on it. So this is... Over half the stock of this is gone. This is 147 centimetres. So if you are dressmaking, I have to say, of all the fabrics that we've got on the show this morning, um, on this hour, this is the softest of all of them. So if you are going to make something out of this today, if you're going to make some pyjamas or something like that, it is super soft and that dressmaking width of 147 centimetres. It is just 3.99 per half metre. First time it's ever been to wear... Oh, hang on a minute. Look at all this. So Eva, Catherine, Joan, um, Yvonne, multi-buying, Alice, Margaret. Uh, we've got Susan, Sandra, Jackie. Well done getting all of these. Uh, Marjorie, we've got Shirley. We've got Trisha Ann. We've got... The list just goes on. Claire. We've got Susan. We've got July. Uh, J July, Julie, Sally, Sandra, Therese, Yolanda. All of you. All of you gone for this. Congratulations on managed to get this. Over half the stock of this is now gone, so please check out your baskets if you've got him. He is brand new today. He is super gorgeous, and he is a fabulous dressmaking with. You don't have to dressmake if that's not your thing. It just means that you're getting a lovely wide width. But don't miss out by leaving him in your basket. Um, I haven't had any Rose and Hubble fabrics before. They're lovely. It's just a beautiful weight cotton. Really lovely. Really lovely. And what a great price there, just $3.99 per half a metre. So if you're popping that in your basket, um, then one unit gives you half a metre, two units gives you a metre, and so on and so forth. If you're in any way confused or not sure, then just give our customer services uh, number a ring, 0800 112 4433. It is free to do so. It's UK-based, and off we go. Now, if done dogs, it's only fair to do cats. Let's have a little look at those. I'm going to let that cat out of the bag and find them. Where is he? Where are they? Here they are. Is this Dashwood? Did I dream it? Is this Dashwood? It is Dashwood. I didn't dream it. Now, I know a lot of you go for Dashwood just because it's Dashwood and you, you are avid Dashwood collectors. Then why not add this into the mix? Cats at Christmas, yes, yes, yes. Lovely soft cotton. They've got crackers, they've got presents, they've got um, candy canes. They've got either martinis or, oh, hang on, there's a great big thread in the middle there. Uh, they've got Christmas trees. They're having a whale of a time, look at them. Fabulous. Oh, there's a little robin. Hey, look, they are so distracted in, um, in, in pulling their crackers that they haven't noticed there's a robin sat right next to them. What are you using this for? One of them's given a robin a canned cane, aren't they? This is one of those fabrics, the more you look at it, the more you see, isn't it? It's fab. So maybe you're making Christmas cushions. Maybe this is going to be the Christmas pillowcase, like Director Tim has. Oh, look, oh, here we go. We're going in on the... Uh, there you go, there's your cat. You see, it's the season of goodwill. Fabulous. Well, yeah, below, the robin wants the, uh, the cat to pull the cracker with him. And the other two are just having a nice drink. It's a very playful fabric, this. Lovely and soft again. From Dashwood, it's £6.50 per half a metre. Maybe you're doing cushions. Maybe you're just going to make that special gift for someone. This is, this is brand new today as well. Please check out your baskets. Uh, so £6.50 there, C-I-A-D-74. Oh, now the Santa heads. Yes, I do love the Santa heads. Let me tidy this out of the way as well. Because the Santa heads, mm, 
They would work on the ivory. I'm not going to get the ivory out, don't worry. So every time I do uh, direct attempts, I'm like, oh, no, it's just too bright. Too bright for my cameras. So just know it goes really well with the ivory. But here is your f floating Santa heads. Why not? I'm just looking to see if this is the blue, the same blue um, as the canvas. It's not quite. But again, we're looking at playful, aren't we? There we go. So $5.99 per half a meter. I think he's fab. And you know, actually, he's a great size because you can fussy cut him if you're English paper piecing. I keep mentioning that because we've got that in the last hour. But also, he's just great for all sorts of different Christmas projects. If you're doing ornaments and things like that, little decorations. Yeah. I've got a friend, actually, that used to wrap her Christmas presents in fabric. Maybe that's the thing. Oh, the soldiers. Now the soldiers, yes, they do need. Here we go. Mm. No, no, no. I thought, I thought it was going to, but no. Right. Here we go. These are your toy soldiers. It's like the Nutcracker Suite, isn't it? And I think that they would work with any of those canvases down there. There we are. So that's your nutcracker. Is it limited on it? There you go. Now you take a look at that. That's looking really rather fabulous. I love the way that it's multi-directional. It doesn't matter which way up you look at it. You're still going to get a soldier. And then these are the, these are the canvases that work a treat with it. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I need to have a quick drink. Just bear with me. My throat is absolutely... There we go. Five ninety nine for your little soldiers, little soldiers, toy soldiers. I see blue. I'm gonna have to get Freddie some of this. He's got all these colours in his room. He's got the red and the blue. Yeah, I think it's gorgeous. So five ninety nine per half a meter of the little soldiers. What else could you make? Hang on, now what else? Could, what else do we make at Christmas? What other things do you make for kids and things like that? No, we haven't looked at those yet. Let's have a look at those. I'm just trying to think what else. What do you make for kids at Christmas? What's, what other sort of things? Give me some ideas here. I'm lacking in ideas today. I know that's why I need some ideas, Producer Paul. So let's have a look at these fabrics because these are rather fab. I'm going to look at them individually. Let's go. Here we go, this one. Now, this is either a really soft red or sort of a pinky red on the background here. This is from Dashwood, actually. It's lovely, lovely and soft. I like that, it's an, it's an unusual take. So brand new today, 599, WOAD 25. Really beautiful. You don't often see that, that mix of the, the red and the pink at Christmas, do you? It's really unusual, I like that an awful lot. Do you reckon, because we had, didn't we? We had, mm, no. No, no, neither of those work. Got to try it. Got to try it because I'd hate for you to get it home. Oh, now, what would happen if you went? Is that too, is that too much with the black? What? Oh, I quite like it with the blue, actually. What do you think with the blue? Yeah. Yes. I think I'm biased because we have, we have pink and blue at Christmas. It is a little bit icy looking, isn't it, by the time that you add that blue in? Yeah. Five ninety nine there for this. This is very unusual. I haven't seen another Christmas fabric quite like this. I do like. So maybe it's an alternative. You see, my niece is very pink. My brother's mortified. He was not going to have a pink child. It's very, she's very pink. She does love all the pink, anything pink. Uh, she just absolutely adores anything pink. So this would be her perfect Christmas fabric. Maybe you're doing kids' outfits for Christmas. Or again, kids' pyjamas, 90s, things like that. She would love that. 5 99 W-O-A-D-25. If you like it, it's the first time it's been to wear. Don't know how long it's going to be around. 
We wanted to bring you new Christmas, new Christmas offerings. Now another new one is which one? The other dashwood. Which one? What? Well, which one? Where's that dashwood as well? This one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Here we are. Now I wouldn't put this next to the uh, the other one because this is a very different red. Whee! There you go. But very traditional. So you've got your snowflakes and your stars, and those stars, they're not metallic. They're just, they're just a good, good gold colour. So again, you're going to be able to wash this, wash and wear. And then, you know, maybe your stockings, maybe pyjamas. These, these cottons from Dashwood are so lovely and soft. So brand new today, £6.50. UWAD 81. Um, producer Paul says this is Christmas for him. This, you know, if anybody had to do Christmas in a fabric, it's this one, it's this one, this one right here. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's the one. Fabulous. I'm just trying to think what else it goes with on here. You can match it through with all sorts, can't you? Uh, I would say Ivory was going to work a treat with that. But I tell you what you haven't shown you, and that's the candy canes. What's your favourite Christmas sweet? We used to have a tree with, um, with candy canes on. My mum always used to do it, and it was, I'm, I've got a really sweet tooth. So I always used to look at it and go, oh, I wonder if she'll notice if some of those chocolates and candy canes and things just go missing. Chaps upstairs, Christmas favourite uh, favorite Christmas sweet. Oh, they're thinking about it. Thinking about it. Come on, producer Paul, you sit. Oh. What do you mean they've changed the shape of, uh, of the triangular chocolate bar? Have they? But it's, they can't. Which means they're taking a triangle out on each segment. Well, that's just wrong, isn't it? Um, oh, triangle gap, triangle gap. Oh, that's wrong. No, no, they can't get away with that. Five ninety nine for your candy cane. So you should stick to your candy cane. No one can mess with a candy cane. Candy cane's a candy cane is a candy cane. This is Lewis and Irene, which is unusual. Normally, Lewis and Irene stick quite firmly with sort of nature and things like that. So it's nice to see something a little bit different for them. I'm enjoying that. Cameraman Mike, you've got kids. What's their favourite Christmas sweet? All the sweets. Yeah. 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 All the sweets. That's what kids are all about, isn't it, with kids? They do love all the sweets at Christmas. Uh, now. Uh, oh, now you see. Director Tim is one of those people that, I'm not too keen on chocolate. What? What? Is that a thing? I've had a message from Angela. Oh, we'd rather a big bag of crisps. Have you seen they've got like Prosecco flavoured crisps now? That's weird. Is it meant to come down through to here? Producer Paul, it hasn't. Oh, the dogs are Westies, not Scotties. Hey, thank you, Angela. Westies, Scotties. They're white. Oh, they've almost sold out, though, so you're going to have to be quick. Uh, like I say, this is, this is the only fabric on the hour uh, that is 147 and, and fine for dressmaking. The canvases are this sort of wide, but you wouldn't dressmake out of the canvases. So this is really gorgeous for that. I, I'm hoping that a lot of you are multi-buying so that you can make pyjama bottoms. You can make all those. Does everybody have new pyjamas for Christmas? Is that just my family? Yeah. Uh, very, very limited. How much? It's going to sell out. So please check out your baskets for this. Make sure that you've got this. Another limited is the scenic one. Let's have another look at that. Oh, so soft. So soft. And actually a lovely drape on it too. Uh, right, scenic. Let's grab the scenic. Here it is. It's buried in there. Now, what are you doing with the scenic? That's what I want to know because lots of you are buying it. What are you going to use it for? That's what I want to know. Are you going to be fussy cutting into it? Or are you going to be using it for cushions? Are you going to be, uh, is this going to be, maybe you're odor coating it and having this for a Christmas tablecloth? $5.99 per half a meter, JDMY59. 
This is limited. Please check out your baskets. Five ninety nine there. J D M Y fifty nine. Fab. Fabulous. Right. Oh, and the baubles that really work with it. In fact, I spotted the same baubles in this fabric as are on the trees in the scenic. So maybe if you've got a you know little bit of the scenic, maybe you want to pop a few uh, sparkly baubles in your bag too. Don't hear that every day, do you? So this is your metallic bauble spot. Maybe you are quilting with it and you just want this. Instead of a ditzy, maybe you're going to go for your metallic baubles. 5 99 per half a metre. I love everyone's different ideas that they have. Uh, what, what sort of things do you make for Christmas? And they come out, don't they? They come out every single year. My mum always has two Christmas trees. She has one with all the, um, all the things that we've made over the years. And then she has like a really stylish one. Right. Christmas stockings on silver. I've lost it. What have I done with it? Ah, it's down here. It's nestling down here. This, is this limited as well? Gosh, you're going crazy. Brand new today and already limited stock on this. So please check out your baskets. Now, how wide is this? There was me saying that the, uh, the dogs were the only... I think the dogs are wider. I'm just going to measure and see how wide this is. Because you might be making pyjamas or something out of this. So let's have a little look. A little looksy, 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 shall we? Uh, 100, 140, approximately. Approximately 140 centimetres. So that's a good width. So if you are making something, and you know, instead of a Christmas jumper, maybe a Christmas shirt or a Christmas blouse. Maybe John Scott should have a Christmas shirt out of this. Maybe that's the way. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Me. I thought I had escaped all of the all of the the bugs going around uh, going around the kids' schools, but clearly not. Uh, there we go. That is your Christmas stockings on silver. Three ninety nine per half a metre. Now, these are great, great value. Now, red Scandi snow... F oh, oh, yeah, no, I love this one. Now, this is... Uh, this, oh, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, yay, there we go. Now, we looked at the different canvases that would work with this. Um, we went with the ecru or the red or the beige. All looked lovely. But there it is. Limited stock on this. Lots of you bought this. Lots of you got it in your baskets. Lots of you need to check out. 3.49 per half a metre. It's incredible value. A really lovely fabric. Kind of a linen-y look behind. Oh, it's... it's sort of an ecru. Let me um, pop these with it so that you can really see. If you're going for any of the canvases. Are the canvases popular this hour, produce Paul? Yeah. Red's most popular. Yeah, kind of figure. But look at those. All of those will work. If you're after a contrast, maybe you're doing Christmas cushions and you're just going to have a, a trim of your feature fabric then you could have three different coloured fabrics and then tie all of them together using this. 349 XPJQ79. Stockings on red. Let's have a look at that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Beautiful. Now, stockings on red. Very popular again, but all of the stockings are brand new in today. So whichever colour. You see, this is the great opportunity. When we, we thought we looked four different colourways with these stockings. It's great if you've got grandkids and you want to do same but different. There can be no arguments then, can there? So these are your stockings on red. 3.99. L-I-J-Q-85. Fabulous. So you've got, yeah, you've got your Christmas stocking, but you've also got the snowflakes in there as well. It's all going on. I like how they've managed to get that 3D-esque look going on as well. It's a bit unusual, isn't it? Let's look at this in cream. Let's do that. So which colour? Which colour are you going for? Oh, you see, now this has got the um, snowflakes in grey. Instead, so you could, you could pick up a grey to go with this. Grey goes with everything. 
Now, producer Paul saying, what about a reversible cushion? Well, what I'll do is... Um, Uh, no, the reds are the reds are the same because you've got the same. Basically, the stockings are all the same colour, and then um, and then it's just so you could do sort of a fifty fifty. But that's what I'm saying. It, these are great because, in fact, if I put all of the different colours together, and then you can pick which ones you want. So this is it in green. This one here, but you see, if you do have multiple grandchildren that you're making for, you've got those four different colourways and. And the stockings are all... It, yeah, as a patchwork, it works, doesn't it? So that's your silver, that is your cream, that is your red, and that is your green. Well, that sort of rhymes, doesn't it? So 3 99 for each of those. This is the one that's on your screen at the moment. 3 99 there. LWJQ79. Fab. We've got a minute left. What? Please check out your baskets. Uh, the dog's probably going to sell out. It's imminent there. And also the scenic. Oh, the cats. Don't forget the cats. Don't forget your cats. Never forget your cats at Christmas. Here we go. Now, after the break, there are your cats. Let me show you the cats. Whimsical cats. Everyone loves a whimsical cat. Uh, and after the break, we've got quilters you go with Jess, which will be wonderful. She's going to be showing us how to decorate our Christmas tables our tables for Christmas, basically. See you in a moment. Oh, yeah, no, there we go. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Join us on Saturday the 4th of November when we'll be joined by House of Alistair owner Alistair MacDonald. Alistair's love of Liberty Fabric and experience working in women's fashion sparked the elusive House of Alistair and his range of fabulous fabric and haberdashery products, some of which we'll be sharing with you on Saturday. There will be fun, frolics and fabulous fabrics, so don't miss Alistair MacDonald's debut shows on Saturday the 4th of November at 9am and 11am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Tune in on Sunday the 5th of November when we've got some fabulous shows lined up for you. Jane Alcock will be joining us at 8am and 10am to share her expertise in quilt making. She'll be passing on plenty of tips and techniques along the way as she creates one of her stunning designs. Then at 9am and 11am, the lovely Irene Colesby will demonstrate how to use the Infilla Automatic Needle Threader. It's such a handy little gadget that solves the frustration of threading needles. We'll also introduce some of the new Lewis and Irene fabrics. So make sure you don't miss these action-packed shows on Sunday the 5th of November from 8am to 12pm only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news and share your own creations with us. Hi, I'm Jennifer Taylor and I'd like to share with you three of my top tips. So my top tip number one would be your embroidery scissors. I like to keep mine on a length of thread and make a necklace out of them so you don't lose them in your sewing room. For my second top tip, I would suggest with your wound bobbins, popping them into a toe separator to stop them from unravelling in your sewing kit. For my third top tip, I would suggest using some really cheap, ineffective thread for your tacking. And the reason being is that it will be easier to snap and you also get to save your more expensive posh threads. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question our friendly team are always on standby you can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433 email us at help at sewingquarter.com 
visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Hello, welcome back. Now you've got me, Natasha McCarty, this hour, and I'm joined again by the very fabulous Jess Entwistle. Now we've got kits for you this hour. We've got Quilt As You Go kits. So if you want to decorate your Christmas table, have it looking absolutely stunning, then this is the way. We've got a table runner, and we've also got table mats for you, and this is what you can be creating. Let's have a quick look. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful. There you go. That's something you're going to bring out year on year, isn't it? Just brilliant. And there's the table runner. Fabulous. So we've got two different bundle options for you. The first one is the one that you've just seen, which has got the Christmas trees in. And again, now I have to tell you, 10 and a half meters of fabric in this kit. You are going to have fabric left over, I'll warn you now. So you're going to be able to do some other Christmas makes, but 10 and a half meters of fabric in each of these bundles. So in this kit, you are getting a meter of your emerald green there, a meter of your holly fabric in cream up here, two and a half meters of your Christmas, I love that Christmas red down there, a meter of your Christmas snowflakes, that's up here, and there's a bit of gold shimmer going on in there. Four meters of vanilla, that's gonna be your backing fabric as well. And a meter of those wonderful Christmas trees. Oh yeah, look at, look at the sparkle there. Uh, you're also getting a couple of threads, and of course, making it all possible, two quilts as you go. So you've got your table runner, and then you've also got your placemats. Fab. There they are. So both of these kits are going to have those um, quilt as you goes in. That's what the Q A Y G means. Quilt cool, as you go. Took me a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what does that stand for? Quilt cool, as you go. Now this is what Jess is going to demo with. So there are your threads. Lovely sort of maroony threads in there. But here, look. You love these when we had these. Now, just let's just remember, 10 and a half meters of fabric. That's a lot of fabric. We'll go th through in one moment what you're gonna get, but these robins, perfect for your Christmas. A meter of this, this is your holly belly vines in green. Two and a half meters of your port. Lovely four meters of your latte, so that will be your backing. A meter of, uh, oh, a meter of robins. I think you get a meter of each of those robins. So a meter of each of the robins, basically, a meter of each of those feature fabrics, a meter of the green, and then lots of those. 10 and a half meters of fabric, and your thread, and your quilt as you goes, and that's 119.49, but that's something you're gonna bring out every year. Every year. Hello. Hello. Mm. How's your throat? Oh, sore. Now, we're I ready. Know, we're know. ready for Christmas. It was because I, I, I have um, small kids, so, you know, we're talking PVC tablecloth here. Um, and we grew up with the proper stuff as well, but there's no way I'm doing that laundry on Christmas time with those kids. But these are great because... It's they that are, nod, isn't it? Yeah, it's the nod. They're quilted. They just go in the wash, and it's really easy to make. It's really, and you could you could personalise them if you wanted to. You've got, you know, you put someone's name on or embroider "Merry Christmas" or oh, you could. That's what I was thinking. So you could do all that. So everyone's got their own individual one. So yeah, because you do get the same people at Christmas, don't you? I mean, it's you it's, do. it's one of those things. Even if you, you know. don't want them there, they're there. And then there's no, oh, who am I sitting next to? It's all there. There you are. They're all there. So. Yeah, and as you say, there is so much fabric. I mean, when the box arrived, I was thinking, features. what? Yeah, there's, there is loads. I mean, I only made, though, you know, you make another four placemats, but I was looking at the meterage, and you have enough left over to do loads of other bits. So six placemats. Yeah. And the table runner, and then whatever other projects you want out of the fabric yeah. that's left over. Yeah, and also your... your um, 
placemats and table runners, they actually come, as all of course grow, printed on your wadding. And this one, it's like a cotton wadding, I think. I'll check on the... It's 80-20. Yeah. So it's 80 cotton, 20 polyester. This is your runner. It's cute, isn't it? It's fun. I, li I didn't actually realise until I started cutting out you had little gold bits on, on yeah. them. Yeah. I don't know if I can get, if you can see, yeah, if you can see the shimmer. So that really does shimmer. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it, and the instructions are really, I remember when I first got them, I thought, where are the instructions? And they're actually buried when they're folded up wadding. But it's, it's just, and you have so much fun working out because you, um, you have your, it's fairly obvious which is your backing fabric and which is your um, binding fabric by the, by the meters you have. Mm. But then you have the four other meters to play to with, play to with. work out which ones you want to go with. Is this the first time that you've done a quilt as you go? No, first time I've done this one with the cotton um, poly mix, but I've done other, you know, the sort of quilt goes like that, and I'm doing another one tomorrow, which is so a Christmassy one. I've done those before. Um, so... I actually find it really, really good fun because it is, it's, it's like um, painting by numbers, you know, or yes. it's that, that sort it's of quilting by numbers. Quilting by numbers. And it's really, and also if you, if you, because you're actually sort of following guidelines, it's much easier to do that. It means each of your table mats is going to look the same. Yeah. And I know look, that yeah. sounds a really crazy thing, but, but with me, you know, sometimes my stitching goes a little bit wobbly, especially yeah, if I'm just does. doing it freehand. But here you've got that stitching guideline. You've got that yeah. line that you stitch to. Your quarter of an inch away from it. so you've got you've got that as the guide all the time yeah you do um so here we have them you have your your lovely pack and they are they're massive packs so this is what and it also because it's got this already on the front cover it, it gives you a guide to actually follow when you follow written instructions as you said earlier um if you've actually got visual instructions it makes life much easier and they do they do have videos as well she's got videos online hasn't she Yes, yeah. so you can do that. So you can, There's the principle. link down there. Mm. Or just make a note of today's date. Go onto YouTube, sewing quarter, today's yep. date, and bring Jess back up. Bring her back up. So um, today, because of, obviously is a lot, we're going to concentrate on a placemat. Principle is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. with, this, with the um, other quilt as you go, which is the, sort of the other wadding, you, it does actually say you iron your, you, you press your, your backing fabric to the reverse. With this one, um, you would use a spray because it's, it doesn't actually have glue, as it were. With any, the rule of thumb with the course as you goes is that if it's the polyester, they've got the adhesive on yep. it. Um, although I know lots of people just like to use yeah. the spray anyway. Well, you could pin it if you wanted to, yeah. if you really wanted to. But with the 80-20, just use an adhesive, a remover, and it has to be a, remo a repositionable Repositional, yeah. There's spray. a standard one, isn't yeah. there? So you yeah, use yeah. those. So instructions very clear. So as you can see, because it is as a set, you're using the same fabric throughout. So you're, you're going to pick fabric A, B, C, D and make it the same. You could change it around if you want to, but for ease, we're going to stick with the same I'm one. excited that you can then also have matching cushions. You can have everything because there is so much fabric. Yeah, exactly. You have bunting, mind you, little <gasps> bunting because you've, yes. you've got the diagonals. So what we're so going to do... So if you've do... got something like a mantelpiece yeah. in your dining room... Oh, you can have little triangles. You could have your doves. A little dove, yes. You can have matching yeah. doves. Beautiful. Now, right. you get your, um, when you open out your pack, you find your instructions buried mm -hmm. within the folded wadding. And then you, you look at, you have a massive piece of um, wadding with your printing on. The, obviously, the six place mats is the biggest. This is, where is it? This is an off cut of two of them. So you just see what they actually look like. Oh, yeah. gosh, you get loads. You get loads. For the actual. So another add in another two of those and yeah. that's what you're looking at when that's you you're looking at when they arrive but. the actual um placemat because it's a pointed end it's also really wide as well what it does mean this is actually quite nice wadding i was saying earlier um doesn't i that you do actually have off cut bits so you could use them for other things i always keep everything i always keep everything because I know. We, were, we were all about the doves earlier we're like yeah you could, you could do the wings yeah and here they, yeah, there yeah they i finished them earlier. off on the break so there we are and there's a little padded one there oh, so fab so you imagine those in this fabric, that would be really cute. So there we are. So you actually, what you actually do is you, you can't iron this. Don't iron this because it may stretch. Um, I tested it just to see on a very low heat and it, it, it's, it, was, it was okay. But I would recommend following the instructions and don't iron it. You can finger press it out. Or if you're actually, of course, if you're using the actual spray, um, it will actually um, 
finger press out. So anyway. in the actual instructions, because what Tim would just like to get, our director would just like to get, is the numbers here. So if I just move that to there, yep. then because we keep saying it's quoting by numbers, around. it's quoting by numbers. Oh, there we go. There you go. So number one is there. Yeah, so you follow and you work your way out. So that would be your first piece of fabric, then two, then three. With this, it's a nice, simple one, actually, yeah. and it just goes opposites. So two and three, four and five, and then off you work. And you just keep going. So opposites, opposites, and so and so forth, and you build it out. Yeah. So you can get quite nice and repetitive. You can. It's, it's a really... I mean, once you're cutting out, it takes forever. Once you've done the cutting out and the, the sort of prepping, it's a really quick... So well, I had a th I had a thought about that Ooh. because yesterday a lot of you bought the stripology rulers. Oh yes, I've seen those before. Bish, 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 done. Really good. Now these are two inch strips, aren't these they? These are two inch strips. We've got a note. We do. We have We've a note. We've got a note on this. On the pla on the place on the table runner. It is it is on the table runner. Isn't it, it is that it's way on around. The table runner. On the table runner. On the table runner. In the quilt as you go instructions, it says to cut the fabric to two and a half inch strips. It means two inches. There's a there's a typo in the two inch strips, as you discovered. You cut everything to two cut and a half everything inches. Everything else for that one. And then went. Hmm. And, and I, I so thought this is a bit bit big, but and so I sewed the first strip on. Then I realised I had a half inch extra, and I thought that doesn't make sense. So then I actually compared. They're exactly the same. So they, they, someone probably just typed in two and a half and just went copy 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 without thinking about it. But yeah, don't do as I did and cut them all out. And then have to be cut them again. The yeah. So just uh, just bear that in mind. And also, so you the have those strips. Fabrics. Well, absolutely. The yeah. strips are all two inch. But I wanted to tell you that, not to go no 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 no. There's an error uh, on something. But just to say that actually, because you multiply up those half an inches and they all add up, yeah. you'll actually loads end up cuts. with more fabric yeah. left. I know. Because of that typo. Happy days. So what you actually do first of all is you. So don't iron this. Just smooth it out. It's fine. Then you actually, using your large ruler, use a ruler, much easier, uh, cut about half an inch outside of this placement line here, mm -hmm. all the way around. And you then cut a piece of fabric a little bit bigger from your backing fabric, so an inch wider. It yeah. actually tells you, I think, in the instructions, where are we? Here we go, 16 times 20. And what you actually do is you then put your placemat using your spray or you can pin it if you prefer if you don't actually have any spray it works fine because it's just it's pulsing after all yeah yeah, yeah exactly and it's not huge you actually put that on your fabric so you end up with this so this is actually sprayed on it's been folded up and you just smooth it out this is the joy of quilts as you go and i can't stress this enough if you've struggled to get large quilts under your machine maybe you don't have a particularly um swanky or singing or dancing type machine uh, and so the thought of quilting a huge item yeah. just daunts you, then that's where Quilt As You Go is always fabulous because that's the biggest size that it, that's going through. Really clear numbers and off they go. Like that. In fact, you could, if you didn't want to do placements, you can make quilts out of this and just do them Absolutely. as quilt panels. Yes, you could. You could you do could. a Christmas quilt. So, yes, yeah, so yeah, that's the size you end up with. As you can see, that's the line there so you actually have your um this is all done you then if you have it use your lovely spray which she recommends mm -hmm. i didn't have it so i just ironed my fabric okay not on this yeah but when i was actually cutting it out i'll show you that spray in just one yeah. moment but this is this is the thing every time you stitch you get that quilt so you that's why it's called quilt as you go You're quilting as you go and that's the whole thing of it yeah uh now and so the fabric making it look absolutely fab. Now, the spray that you keep referring to is your Marianne's Best Press. Yes, and she mentions it here, doesn't she? Yeah. Well, she actually talks about June Taze Quilt Base, but it's the same thing. It's the same sort of product. It's, um, it's a starch, basically. And so, whereas with the spray starch, you know, like in a... Yeah, white, yeah, not very nice. White and a bit flaky. This, you don't get any of it. So there's nothing to clog. There's nothing that gets mm. horrible. This is the, just the best, most lovely uh, press spray. Absolutely lovely. And that's 4 99 And in all of the quilts as you go, she really recommends having a spray like yeah. that. Because what it actually means, because you can't iron on this one, you iron mm. at the end. Um, 
what it actually means is that when you actually sew a piece of fabric on and fold it back, you then press it down with your hands and it's finger nice and smooth. It, yeah. Finger press it, yes. So I ended up finger pressing and it was, it was okay. As you can see, they, they, they look fine. But if you want to have it immaculate, use that sort of spray. Yeah. So there we are. So we start off, so you have your first piece, cut number one. Um, I had so much fun choosing from this range because I, I saw these on air a week or so ago. Yeah. Lovely fabric. So two kit choices. The ones that are made up uh, is here, is 115.49. DDGC50. Now the next one is the one we're about to work with, which has got all the robins, and that details down the bottom, 119.49. Yeah. It's lovely. It's a really it's nice It's beautiful, fabric. isn't it? So you get a lot of fabric and it's a really well, nice Well, ten fabric. and a half metres, that's your Christmas fabric done, isn't it? It there is. There we go. So, it tells you, for each placemat, or for the table one, it'll be exactly the same, um, what you actually need to cut. So, and as you can see, they're different size strips, so follow it to the letter. Yes. Then um, it tells you they're actually sewed on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I don't have a quarter inch on my machine. Right. Um, and even moving the needle along, it wasn't exact. So what I ended up doing was using my marker pens. Right. And I will show you. So there's always a way. That's why I like working with Jess. You're always very resourceful. You might not have you know all what? the kit at home, but there's always a way to work around these things. That's the fun thing about doing sewing. It's working out how to find work something out for you. So here we have, you can just see, I think, on the actual strips, if you can see the camera, who's going in on them, I've actually drawn on there the actual quarter inch. Um, now, if you're a beginner, that might feel really comfortable for you. Oh, it's much that, easier. Yeah, yeah, because then you're not having to wibble and wobble around all yeah. over the place. It's just there. It's there. So, using, depending on what you actually have, I have used the white one, and I also use, it's slightly faded now because it's been in my bag, but it still works. I use the, um, the lovely brown marker pen, so that's my quarter inch on mm -hmm. there. So, um, I'm trying to remember, I've got one prepared, I'm just checking which is the first one. The first one I chose was Burgundy, Ron nice. Burgundy. Nice, I believe it's actually called Port. Port? Yeah, because... Oh, I love a glass of port Yeah, well, that's just it, because I had a producer ball going, well, yeah, I'd like two metres of port. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fabric. Fabric. So, this is number one. Number two uh, goes, don't worry if it's not exactly flush to the line, because you have a quarter of an inch to play with, because that is your placement line. These are your placement lines, so let me just grab one. That is where it goes up to, and you stitch down there and then you fold it back so if that isn't a few minute reason don't worry about it it's absolutely fine it also tells you when you keep pushing it down and pin it in place just to hold it because it may move around the machine so i'm just going to pin this in place it says don't pin through all three layers so i wonder why don't you pin don't pin through, pin through all three i don't know I t maybe it makes it bulky i i i ended up just doing a bit of both Mix and match. Sometimes it went through all three, sometimes it went through two, sometimes it went through one, it didn't work. So I just did it again. <laughs> so, number two. So we just place it on the placement line. I would love to see you work in your... Oh, uh, my house. In oh. your, do you just chat to yourself as you're sewing? I do, and then when it's <laughs> two in the morning and I can't, I have my headphones on listening to music, having to remind myself not to sing. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, I have people that sleep in my house. Yeah, um, yeah and then I then picked up um, son number one. See the placement line is there. Son number one from school yesterday. Son number two has football on uh, Wednesdays. And I said to son number one, as we started walking home, I said, Thomas, the house um, looks like someone's gone in and thrown a mix of a bag of rubbish and a bag of fabric around. Don't worry about that. I'll be sorting it out before I head to Birmingham. <laughs> he walked in the door and he went, Mum, what have you been doing? <laughs> Everything. Now. <laughs> so, I'm just going to pin the opposite side as well, and then sew, and then sew. So, I'll do that. Oh, now, Carolyn, the Scottish board says, Good morning, ladies. Loving the show. Ooh. It's all Christmassy. It um, is. You know, now it's November. We're allowed to now. We've got yeah. bonfire night on Saturday. Yeah, and then yeah. it's, you, there's, there's no excuse not to start thinking about getting that to tree be full up. on Christmas. To be honest with you. I'm really tempted to put it up. Really? In November? In November? I know. Controversial, I Jess. And we should a tree in November. Well, I don't have a real tree in my room. Well, we, in our sitting room. We, we, have, we have three little trees. Well, two little ones and one big one. Because I love Christmas. Can't help it. So excited for Christmas in You're July. You're like my mum uh, in terms of, yeah, no, no, one tree. Yeah. None of this putting three. it up on Christmas Eve stuff. What's that What's all about? about? I Start know. Start opening your presents on Christmas Eve. Exactly. 
No, it's wrong. Just one, just one. We open one present on Christmas Eve. Really? Mm -hmm. Can you choose? So there's like the smallest one, which looks really expensive, and a sort of like a. You do that when you open. <laughs> we open it and it turns out to be a kicker. It'll be a thimble. <laughs> then we are like, <laughs> we're like, hi. Hey. Yeah. Right. Set your machine because you're doing quilting to a long stitch because right. it, it's, you're, you're going through different layers of fabric. So I set mine to a three. And then we will start back stitch at the beginning um, and then carry on. So lift it up and now, sew along that quarter inch. Yes. What I like here, Jess, is that actually you haven't gone for an all singing, all dancing machine here. You've gone mm. for the 340. I love Often, 340. you know, we feel like we have to have the, the best machine that we sell here. You don't. You can manage quilt as you go because it's so simple, so effective. Uh, you know, it's, it's easy to do on it any is. machine, and that is the joy of quilt as you go. Well, I, I've, um, it's like when you, many years ago when I was learning to type. Learnt on an old-fashioned machine, one of those ones that would chew your fingers. You know those yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And then um, when other people learn how to do things, they like, oh, it doesn't have all the all the bells and whistles. It's nice to have the bells and whistles. I do like. Is it the six eighty? Yeah, I we love did that. like playing with that one the other week. That was. I got a bit excited about stitches, didn't it? It was really fun. Um, but yeah, I have um, a sort of a machine a bit like this, slightly slightly different. Mine's a Janume. Janumi. Um, it's the one they use on the sewing bee. Ah, couldn't help yes. it. I couldn't resist. I thought it's good enough for sewing bees, good enough for me. We well, see Elna and um, the same, same company. Same company, company yeah. I thought they were. So you're in good company. Because um, the, uh, the accessories are, are match, so they mix and match. Oh, nice. So you sew and snip as you go. There's nothing so opposites. Worse than... Opposites. That's yeah. with this. It's opposites. There's nothing worse. I always find there's nothing worse as you go along to have a machine, a, a thread catching at the back. So I always snip as I go. Do you know everyone's different? It does make me laugh. There are those guests that are like, just do all of that afterwards. Tidy up afterwards. Ooh. It's like, because <laughs> I think, ooh. it's like, as, as I, because I, um, you know, have to do, have my other life, which is, you know, children and, and house and stuff, kind of house, um, is that I tend to sort of tidy up as I go, because otherwise, well, apart from when I'm doing a massive mess. Now, there you go, you press it back. As you can see, Okay. As you can see, it may not actually reach to the end, don't worry, because you push it back and it will go as far as you actually need it to. So you just push, 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 and then... I tend to have two pin cushions going on either side of the machine. Oh, do you? Yeah, I have one. And then works? I sort of pin here and then fill that machine up and then I swap, swap them around. Over. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. So then I'm just going to pin that there and that will hold it. And then on the other side as well. And pin that there. Now we've got two different fabric bundles for you, which we're going to have a look at. The one that Jess made everything out of, I think, is um, trad. It's, yeah, it's it's fun. It's exciting. This is more traditional, isn't it? So, yeah. what sort of Christmas do you have? This is cut sort of contemporary. Yes. If you have sort of a very sort of Scandi grey interior, it's quite sort of elegant, isn't it? Yeah, because you've got the grey in there and that central and the, piece there. The lovely robins, just. But gorgeous. of course, that's up to you how to how you want to mix and match all of these colours through. I was thinking about the placemats. There's mm. no reason why you couldn't have a, a different fabric because if you love the robins and you want to give them each a different airing, yeah, then you know you could exactly equally you do just that. change them around. So what are we on now? We're on four and five. So four and five. Go the right way around, should we do four? Every now and then you think, oh, I think maybe I'll do five instead of four. No, no you follow it. So pin it to there and follow that. If you can't see the line because you've got fabric at the top, just lift it up, pin and stitch, and you'll be fine. I've, I've known um, guests get their mark pen out if they've covered it out and just go over the top so yeah. you can see. There's always a way. There is always a way. You know, our sewers are very resourceful. We are. If nothing else. We do this for a living. We have to be resourceful. Yes. We love it. And I absolutely love this one. This is so much fun. Even when you're tired, you think, oh, because it's, it's really once you start going. Also, what I found is when you get to the end points where they don't overlap, you just do there, 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 because then it's satisfying. You feel like one side's done. But we'll get to that. We will. Christmas. Is, is it Christmas? Is that your time of year? Is that the one where you just have to start decorating your house? Are you like Jess? And are you <laughs> thinking, right, get Bonfire Weekend out of the way? Ooh, fireworks and on this. Saturday. Can't wait. Who's the biggest kid in your house, Jess? Me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have two sons who are still kids, obviously. But I can see them as teenagers. I'll be that, that parent. Yeah, who gets super excited about Ooh, everything? Come on, boys. Come and you're boys. going to dress up. No, Mum, no, Mum. But I've made you this. Well, That's what it'll be, right, Jess? We did, yeah. We did, um, 
Halloween, particular treating on. When was Halloween? Tuesday? Wednesday? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday. Um, you lose track of time. And um, yeah, so we did that. Um, and uh, of course, my two dress up. They're still, we, we still, they're still pr primary age. So definitely going around doing Halloween. We never did it as kids, obviously. Um, it wasn't really around. Was it really around for us? Not, no, I don't think so. Not no, like it is now. No, it's, not it's, now. Um, it's everywhere, isn't it? It's, it's been. I should have pinned that as well. Okay. I think, you know, America has had. It's taken over, hasn't yeah. it? Americanism. But I don't mind Halloween. I mean, we, I know uh, for some people it's, it's not their sort of cup of tea, but my, my brother. Um, is a Halloween baby. He was actually born on Halloween, so we was had. He? he was. So we always used to have. Um, do you remember back in the days when uh, I'm thinking food coloring was probably not as safe as it should be. But you'd have sort of <laughs> green <laughs> coloured teeth for yeah. days. Yeah, we'd have sort of green teeth for days and days. That's cut a bit longer, actually. Look, here we go. This is me having cut that a little bit too long. So I'm just going to snip that down a little bit. And that's okay, isn't it? I yeah, mean, it fine. doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter because it's going to be, it's going to be covered. It's going to be covered. I would say if you're doing, if you find something a bit too long and you've got it going on to your beige um, or ivory or oatmeal, I'm not sure what that colour is at the top of my head, then you can trim it down. But okay. yeah, this one's actually going to have a green next. Oh, nice. So it'll be covered up. Latte. 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 Oh, mm. I love latte. Oh, nice. And the other one, you get vanilla. So you've got, I think that was vanilla in uh, in that one, isn't it? And then latte in this one. Tell you what, why you pin that, I'm, I'm going to go on. and have a look because now we've started talking about them. It, well, yeah, we should all see. Now the one that we've completed is this one. So you're getting, and this is the most popular actually. So you're getting ten and a half meters, but a meter of each of the feature fabrics and the green, and then more of those. We'll get to those in a minute. So a meter of your holly. Yeah, love those. So you're going to get so much left over. A metre of that one as well, and a metre of your Christmas trees. Look at the gold on there. Metre of your green. And then here, this is your vanilla. Four metres of vanilla, because that's going to be your backing as well. And two and a half of your Christmas red. So that's how your ten and a half metres is shaping up. Don't forget your threads and, of course, your quarters you goes packs as well. This is a full comprehensive bundle here. You're not going to have to go out for sort of to add things in. Um, do check out your basket if you're after that one. Now, the other basket, uh, the other bundle is a little bit more contemporary. That's the one that we're working with at the moment. Just you wait till you see how it pans out. It's beautiful. So, again, um, a metre each of your sort of festive fabrics. So, a metre of your uh, robins. No, they are. That's one of producer Paul's favourites as well. I like that one. And then that's the grey robin that we're starting to work with already. Uh, holly sprig there, metre of that. Now, I believe it's a metre of your green as well, isn't it? And then we start to get into your port, two and a half. Oh, it's two and a half metres of port. We said two, two and a half metres. And then this is your latte. Love the latte. Four metres of that. So all in total, with your quilt as you go, with your threads, 119.49. It's a massive, massive stack of fabric there. Now, I know that you love quilt as you go, and it might be that you've already stocked up on your, on your Christmas fabric from the last show, in which case, let me show you. We've only got a few. But this is your quilt as you go placemats. So that's why we've kitted them, so that you've got everything that you don't need to worry about how much of this, that, and the other that you need. But if you are just after the placemats, or maybe you have more than six for dinner, then 15 99 But these are very, very limited. Okay, so please check out your baskets instantly for that. Now, we've only got four of the table run available. I mean, when I say really limited, it's like, oh, okay. We can bring you a couple of, well, four of these, but if you are after just the table runner, then there it is, $15.99. Maybe you do a kid's table. Ooh, buffet. Oh, a buffet, yeah, that would look buffet, lovely. $15.99. Yeah, now, Jess, you're having a good old pin over here. I, I am, I'm see. just pushing them back. Um, yeah, I was thinking Boxing Day buffet, you put everything out there. You might want to take it out into the garden or something if you've got decent weather. Six. They say it's going to snow. No, really? Yeah, but they lovely. say that every year. It's like crying wolf, isn't it? I Do know, I believe but them? 
Freddie keeps telling me it's going to snow. He's really excited oh. about it snow because he's never seen snow. Oh, but of course he won't have, really, because no. we haven't had a problem with snow no, for ages. No, no, no. And then you feel really guilty because I... Maybe I can't remember correctly, but I'm fairly certain we had lots of snow growing up. It, it must, felt, it like, felt it, didn't like it, didn't it? Like we had hotter summers and we had more snow. Well, I'm sure we, we did. Maybe we're just projecting what we actually want. <laughs> no, it was much better when we were younger than today. <laughs> It's probably, we had probably proper was, winters yeah, back in the day. Back in the day. Well, I, I didn't mind mind you. I grew up in the northeast in the Yorkshire Dales. Oh, well, of course you're going to get snow up yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, we had snow chains on the car. We had everything. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, so, you know, I you grew say up snow chains here. In people Sussex. Go, oh. So I was a soft southerner. Maybe you didn't have to well, sort of, like, no, dig your car out. I do remember one then. year where we had snow drifts, six foot snow drifts. Oh, you could get a car out. You see, that, that was standard where I was from. There was a standard, um, um, my mother used to say, uh, there's a snowflake, they're going to close the A66. Because it, it, it would just... I mean, people would abandon their cars. I, I remember those days clearly pinned down. I remember those days clearly people would actually abandon their cars and you'd, you'd oh, just yeah. sort of dig them out the following day. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, it'd be fine. That's, that was just the way it was. Uh, now, Rosemary in Belfast says, Hello, ladies, I'm really enjoying the programme. Can I send a photo? Please do. Oh, yes. Please do. Uh, that's studio at serenquarter.com. That's how you send a photo. What's the photo I of? I don't know. She doesn't say. Oh. It's a big surprise. Uh, and we've had a photo from Rachel as well. She says Christmas is her favourite time of year. See? And the Santas are lining up already. Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just brilliant. Nice. Yeah. Well, I think now, now you know, you, even, the, even the people that sort of moan, oh, Oh, Christmas. here are the Santas. Oh, look, they're the Tilda Santas. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, that we've got him down here, haven't we? Yeah, oh, he's in the there studio. He he's in the studio just behind us. Oh, I didn't realise he came in that other one as well. Oh, that's lovely. That's really pretty. Oh, look, is that... And that's so in quarter on in the background. Nice. <laughs> in the mirror. That's the Fabulous. way it should be. Yeah. I'm just going to do this one. Oh, no, that's lovely. You see, that's a nice thing, though, isn't it? When you get the when you get things like the Tilda Santas. Well, we didn't have those on very long ago. Gosh, she's made, she had a quick turnaround there to make that's those. That's really quick, yeah, actually, isn't impressive. it? Yeah, no, I, I love the Tilda Santos. They are, are very cute. It's the beard, the little quilted... Is it a quilted beard? Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. It really is lovely. We, um... When, um... When my son was very little... Yeah? My, my dad... I, I often describe my dad as a... a, a, a Freddie and my dad, there's a big, big love between them. And, um... And my dad has a big, white, bushy beard. He <gasps> looks like... Christmas. Yeah, no, he looks like a skinny Captain Birdseye. If you can imagine that, that's my that's how I would describe my dad. If you ever had to pick him out of a lineup, he's like a skinny Captain Birdseye. Which meant that when I took Freddie to meet Father Christmas, it was like it was the wrong beard. Uh... It was the wrong beard, and there were tears. There were beard tears. Let oh, me tell you. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Father Christmas. I lo oh, you know what? Does that mean it's now time for seasonal movies? Oh, Elf. We've uh, yeah, we've got Elf lined up, ready to go. Uh, That's the first seasonal Christmas movie that we watch at home. My favourite is um, Arthur Christmas. Have you done that one yet? Uh, oh, yeah. Tell me. Get, yes. get Freddie onto that one. He'll okay. absolutely right. love it. It is one of my... And then we also um, have all the snowman and the snow... Where the snowman, the snow dog. Love them. Brilliant. So, how are we doing for time? Um, we're just after the half past. Oh, we're fine then. So we just carry on going... Push and push and push and push. Here we go. Because it really doesn't matter if you don't hit the line because it's going to be covered up. Yeah, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It's going to be covered up. So we'll just do a number. Are we on? So Eight. 20 minutes left is before, because I'll go and have a look at the fabrics. That's fine. We'll, get to, we'll probably get down um, to these bits and then I can show you one I've prepared. Hey. Oh, yeah. Now, of course, as you go, table runners have sold out by themselves. Uh, we only had a handful. Half the stock of the placemats have already gone. I knew they would. I knew they'd be really, really quick to go. Maybe some of you, you know, maybe you just you need extra placemats because you've maybe. got more than six people coming for dinner. How many do you cook for? Oh, it depends on the year. This year, it's just going to be the four of us. OK. Um, so, yes, we'll be doing Do you that. alternate? Because we get my brother and, well, his, yeah. and his wife and kids. We get them alternate Christmases. Well, last year, they don't seem to come on Christmas Day because everyone's sort of got their sort of um, families they see as well. But we have, um, last year, my brother stayed and then my sister and her now fiancé. Congratulations. On Monday, that's, Barbara that's and That's a Mark. recent thing, isn't it? Yeah, they got engaged um, last, year, last week. Aww. So, um, a bridesmaid next year, me. Yes. I said, do I have to dye my hair? I'm like, no, good. 
Why would you have to dye your hair? Because it's grey. And I love my grey hair. I love yeah, my, then my why lovely grey white hair. Why would you change well, it? I don't know, because I always think bridesmaid grey hair, is that right? No, it's it fine. just feels weird. It's fine. But um, yeah, so there's wedding dress shopping and um, bridesmaid dress shopping. Is she going to go for a Christmas wedding? No, it'll be summer next year, I think. Oh, I would have loved a Christmas wedding. We had, we had a summer wedding. What did you have? Summer. Yeah. I'm, you see, a friend of mine got married in winter. It was just gorgeous. It was frosty. She looked amazing. It was all twinkly lights. So I absolutely love winter I think weddings. you can really go to town. You can, can't you? Yeah. Hey, then, you could have done your doves as favours. Uh, that, that'd be a, you know, I love my friends, but that's a lot of work. But you could actually make doves for, I'm going to do a centrepiece or something, yes. for the tables. That would yes. be really pretty. Okay, and maybe not favours. Maybe I was getting a little bit uh, excessive maybe there. Maybe depends how many um, people you have staying. Maybe you but you could, you could have a, Yeah, you could have the doves in the centre and then um, have feathers. You could... Oh, what's that green stuff that you make, that you do the, fat, the flower arranging with? Eucalyptus? No, uh, no, the actual stuff you stick it into. Oh, Oasis. Oasis, there you go. So you could... Um, you know how Tilda has the, the little sticks? Little pokey sticks. Oh yeah. So you could then attach those. You could have the doves in there with some holly. That would look really cute. Wouldn't that be lovely? That would look really pretty. But you see, then you're going to have so much fabric left over with this kit. That's the joy of it. That's why you know we keep bouncing around all sorts of ideas because yes, you've got this stunning quilt as you go to do, but you've got so much fabric. Ten and a half meters of fabric. That's there. a huge amount. It is a huge amount. That you've then got left over to think about all those little other accessories. Maybe you're going to do bunting to go over the mantelpiece. Maybe you're going to... Um, well, yeah, OK, so this is the kit at the moment that we're using. This is the one with the robins. And that's 119.49 EGGC99. But you've got again. 10, and, and this is what I cannot stress enough, 10 and a half metres of fabric here. You could. So there is plenty to play with afterwards. That's a really nice thing. You could make um, little napkin rings to go with as well if you wanted to. Little strips, very easy to do. Use the same two-inch style. Yeah, very and nice. And then you could do have your little robin as a little fussy cut little thing to go on top. Like, so it looks like a fat ring. That would look really pretty. Yes. And that would look really cute. All these different things. All these different things. So I'm just going to do these ones. Yep. And then now then we'll have reached the end and then I'm going to go ding, 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 ding. And then we'll see how long we've got and then I can do the binding. You ding, ding, ding away, Jess. Ding, ding. See, it is a really quick sew once you get on. Put your radio on. Well, you see, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of the stripology, the creative grid stripology, which would make actually the prep for this yeah, prepping incredibly is. quick. But once you get into the swing of just two inch strips, then you're going to be you're going to be absolutely cooking on gas, aren't you? You are. And then you then it's kind of done. Maybe with the leftovers, you would then do like a log cabin quilt or something oh, to echo lovely. the echo the strips. Yeah. You could. That would look really cute. It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? So many options to go with after this. Right. Then we have this one. Oh, what I would say as well. This obviously comes with. Um, were you saying this is port thread as well? Oh yes, port thread. Port thread. Um, you. That obviously means you have a colour on the back. So either you could use a different colour on your bobbin, as you mentioned earlier. We were talking about sort of before, weren't we? Yes. If you didn't want to actually have those details, but it's kind of nice to have have the contrast. So the port blends in beautifully on the top. Yeah. But if you didn't want to see all of that on the background where you're quilting, just put a cream thread in your bobbin. And yeah. You're done. Maybe we're done. So just snip that off. Oh, and that one. How long did each of the table mats take when you when you got it? With earphones on, not chatting to me, not listening to music, or the kids. Oh, no, no, are, no, no when the kids aren't around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no demands for dinner, snacks, anything else. <sighs> Constant snack demands. I don't remember being so demanding about snacks when I was a child, but obviously we were perfect. Really? Um, yeah. Um, anyway, um, I would say once you cut everything out, or including cutting out. Once you've cut everything out, once you start to sew. What time we been? About 40 minutes? Well, it depends how you bind. And we, we're, we're going to bind, and then if you slip stitch the back, obviously that's when you sit in front of your favourite TV and you just sort of like... After Christmas After or something, Christmas yeah. or Frasier yeah. or something, I don't know. Um, just sewing a, quarter. Sewing other quarter. Things, you know, other yeah. things are on TV. Other things are on in TV. The evening, in, in the evening. In the evening, evening yeah. Um, or you could do a, a, a stitch in the ditch, as I did. I would say about 45 minutes. 45 minutes. It, it, once bad, you've done your it? prep, it's yeah. the prep which takes forever. So what 
what this, when you reach this stage, it tells you to go 10, 11, but you don't need to because they don't overlap. So I'm just going to go down and then down and we'll see how we go. And then um, I can show one other one you've heard earlier. Now, what um, I have actually chosen to do now is our lovely more robins. Oh, but it picks up that port colour. It does. It. And then that one. Mm -hmm. And then I thought I could either do the latte. Mm hmm. Very pale latte. Um, obviously a very milky one. Yeah, it's a very milky latte. Um, but I decided that I want. I, I loved him so much. I decided to put Robins on the edge. Oh, and you're still so you're going to see him. There's loads. I mean, this is actually that size is actually where are we? Um, a three and three quarter inch square cut in half. You need two per place mat. So you're only going to use about that much. And there's loads of fabric. There's absolutely loads. These are your instructions. They come in the, each of the kits. So this is the one just for the place mat. And it does show you, so it shows you what to cut out. So for each of those cutting instructions, it's per placemat. Per placemat, yes. Yeah. So you just do it, because you might want to do them all different. Yeah. You might want to do them all differently. You might want to, you might want to, you might not have time, or you might not have, I mean, I, I don't have a sewing room. I have um, taken over the dining room table. Um, so you might not be able to have everything out, because it is a lot of stuff. Yeah. You might just want to be able to do, and it's rather, it's, it's rather nice to actually complete, that's what I quote, to go is good fun because it's well nice to complete something and have it done so yes if you do a block yes. and then you're like and achievable because you can do yeah. you can do a placemat an evening and yeah. in a week you've got it done so maybe one night you do your cutting the next night you start to sew mm. and maybe then you do a spend a night doing the you know if you want to slip stitch your binding maybe you spend an evening doing that yeah so it's it's however you want to work it yeah so it makes it it makes it much easier to do it on this sort of smaller scale um, but I would say, I mean, because cutting is, is a bit of a bind, I would say get that over and done with for all of them one go, because then you just feel like, oh, it's done. And also sort of mark in there if you want to. I used to hate cutting, but now with the creative bits, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I think it's, it's almost swung the other way. And I'm like, yes, is it what like, can I cut now? Is it like ironing when you actually have a decent iron? You're like, ah. Oh. No, because I have a decent iron and I still hate ironing. I still hate ironing. Yeah. I must look at these <laughs> I haven't actually looked at these creative grids yet. I might have a have a look. Oh, Jess, if you hate cutting, and I'm kind of getting that, you know, from you. Just it's just stuff. just a hint of it's not your favourite thing. No. It's like it's it's what has to happen before it's we, like I love to eat. <laughs> but the <laughs> cooking bit, it's like, oh, cook oh, it again. Yeah, yeah. the cooking I actually prefer, I know this is kind of really weird, but I prefer the clearing up. I know that's weird. That is really weird. No, because it, you know, it's yeah. Yeah, I spend a week clearing up after my husband's roast dinners. <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. I love to. Are they legendary? It. Yes, they are. Legend tells of legend. But every pan apparently needs to be used. <sighs> Why? <laughs> a <laughs> level of irritation, especially as you think the standard rule applies that if you're the one that's actually cooking, then you don't have to wash up. I know. Yeah, I know. And you're like, oh. So I now loiter. And I wash up as he's cooking. I'm like, I'll just take that. And it's like, I haven't finished that. Well, oh, there you go. I was going to say, do you loiter sort of like, do you need to use that? <laughs> Are you sure you need to use Maybe that? Maybe I should. Maybe that's where I'm going wrong. We'll never cook again. <laughs> now we've got 10 minutes left. OK. Here. In that case, I'll just show these ones on very quickly. And then I'll show you the as it's, ooh, um, as it's done. So we, I love this. You draw, if, you, if you don't have your quarter inch, you've got it drawn on. You just follow the lines, hopefully. Well, it's lovely and easy, isn't it? It's lovely and easy, and it won't be wonky. There you go. Oh, uh, now, you see, uh, Director Tim is sounding like uh, some sort of domestic goddess at the moment Ooh. up there. He's saying, I tidy up, I hoover, I wash up. It's brilliant. That's amazing. And he comes to work, does all this. Oh, he says it's called living on his, on his own. Doesn't oh, like say, does, he, does he have a partner? <laughs> oh, you're on your own. Oh, well. You see, and, and uh, you never know what it might be when he gets a partner, he might stop all that. Because I've done that now. Your turn. Right. So, put a little robin on. I love my little robins. You could, if you wanted to, really fussy cut these, but I haven't because yeah, I wanted to save much fabric. So you could work out where the little robin's going to be if you want oh, to put a little one. Center. Yeah, it depends on, on how you want to do your fabric. Um, I haven't bothered. No, you will get into the swing of this. And the, the joy of this is that it's just straight stitch. If you can do a straight stitch, then you can quilt as you go. Yeah. It's, it's as easy as that. As soon as you can straight stitch, then off you go. It looks spectacular. We're going to see... This is it in the other colourway. 
We're working, we've got two different colourways. We're working with one we've made in the other. I say we, Jess. <laughs> Sorry, we, we, yeah. we have done this. Uh, so that is the option that is down the bottom of your screen, 115.49. Please check out your baskets for that. That's your table runner. Hey, yeah, you see, producer Paul says that's going to make an impact. It She's is. quite right. Is. But Leanne, so, so all of a sudden, that is Christmas on a on a table. There is no other option, is it? It's just there. Because the thing is, you, you you don't necessarily have to have that out just on Christmas Day. You could have it out and just put I don't know candlesticks, bowl of fruit. That looked really pretty. We had something in the middle there, big bowl full of sweeties. What about a nativity? Some people still put a out nativity. a nativity, don't they? We do. Do you? Yeah, we have a little wooden one. There you go. That would look lovely. Now, so that is one corner. Okay. Which looks so you like... just repeat, repeat all the way down. Da, da, da. And it's at this point that Yay! you then press it. So I will move this one because it's confusing to see two together. There you are. Fabulous. So it's what it actually looks like. What I like is that you'll get into the room and you'll just get going, get going, get going. So there. Lovely. Really pretty. You, you'll notice on your actual quilt as you go panels, you've got these um, corner bits. Yes. Here. That is because you now cut this flush to those lines okay. along there. Okay. To make a rectangle, it says in the instructions. Do that. That's going to be the that. most satisfying bit. We'll do that. Um, it says you end up with a, I should say, it's about fifteen by nineteen. Fifteen by nineteen. Mine yeah. end up being slightly smaller, but um, yeah, as long as it's as long as they're equal. So as long as when you have your points are sort of equal, then it's fine. And it's you know this is um, something that you've hand made, so it doesn't. It's not machine made with precision cutting. Do your best. So, we get our lovely ruler and we find our lines. Because it's cotton and it might have moved, they might be slightly right. wobbled. So just make, what I do is I just sort of try and line up the points so they actually look in the right sort of spot. Okay. And so you can see where the sort of line is along Yeah, no, there. fabulous. So. It's nice to have those guidelines again, isn't it? It is. And so then, you know, you can match the centre of your table mat with the centre of your runner. You can make, or... You might want to have some half burgundy or port, port. coloured robins and then half grey. So you can have all different placemats if you want. It's entirely up to you. You've got enough fabric there. And that's what you have to remember. You've got so much fabric. Now, because it's actually, um, you're going cutting through loads of layers of fabric. Let me just put that Cutting through loads of layers of fabric. Make sure you've got a, a sharp um, uh, rotary cutter. You could use scissors if you don't have one, oh, but it's much no, easier. Oh, no, yeah. no. So we'll just do the other side. What I do as well is if, because it may, be, it may have moved, I just see how much room I've got on this side, which is probably about a quarter of an inch. Where am I? About a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Um, and so to make sure that I've got a quarter of an inch on this side now, as well. Now, see, the beauty of, of, the, of these rulers is that that is your quarter of an inch. It's on there, isn't it? Yeah. So... Um, and because your binding will actually cover any extra bit that you can see, you don't need to worry about that. Quilt as you go is absolutely per perfect for your beginner quilter. You know, we were we were able to chat quite a lot uh, because it's it's that that gentle repetition of straight line sewing. Mm. Once you pay attention while you're cutting your bits <clears> and bobs out. This is this is this is my, Sorry, I'm interrupting you. This I have the other one, but I'm using this one today. This one is it, I'm sort of thinking, how does it work? Oh yeah, oh, no, yes. you know that. It's really good. It's really just it's... squeeze it, and it's a safety one, so that then as soon as you let go of it, it's safe, and then you can lock the blade out. Make sure it's all off. There we go. I don't yeah. know why I'm clipping it. I don't have any children around. I, it's just a habit, and it's a it great is. habit to get into. And then at this point, because you've got a really high table, this is this point. You sort of line it up just to make sure that is going to be flush. See, I have a, I use the dining table so I can lean right over. So now you're like, you feel really tiny looking at this. We have four and a half minutes. Right, okay, in that case, we'll cut and then we'll show you um, how we can bind. Fab. Very quickly, there we go. Right, okay. So, lean. It's very satisfying doing something like this. No, and also because they would go into my, my bag of stuffing. Oh, you see, no, I, even I think would actually throw that away. But, oh, no, know. that goes into my bag of stuffing. Actually, because then look. when I make dog beds, I've just put that goes into my bag of stuffing. Could it be a little, I don't know, little triangles hanging from a tree? Oh, that actually looks really pretty, that colour, <laughs> that robin on there. Four minutes. One minute. Four minutes. Four minutes. I get distracted. It's fabric. I always get distracted, I know. Right, OK, we'll ah, cut ah, that ah, and then ah. we'll, we'll show you how to bind. So, and lean forward. Lean. Yeah. 
Yeah. There we go. So, one placemat. And then, fab! It tells you, before you cut, I should yeah. say, before you cut, if you want to add any extra quilting on. If you want to do your swirls, you want to embroider someone's name, you want to do anything else you want to do, do it now at that point. Now is the time. Do it, yeah, do it at that okay. point. And then iron it again and then cut it down. Yes, that looks fab. I Thank love you. That. I actually really like that. Just I actually really like that as a little hanging. I think if you're doing like a little mini quilt, that would look really pretty. Oh yeah. So this point you then do your binding. It okay. tells you where are the instructions gone. Here. The, see this, imagine this times a million in my house. It's got two and a half minutes. Okay. Tells you how to make your binding. It, it tells you um, in the instructions that you can look, look online and see how, how, how they actually do binding. The other quilt as you go shows you how to actually... Yes, it does. Uh, yeah. yeah, because you're binding the two yeah. pieces together. That's the good thing about quilts. There's so many tutorials out there on their website, so you can see. So I've already done my lovely strips Yay. in port. I've also, the way I'm doing this is you, when you cut your fabric, you do one cut at a 45, one end, fold it over by a centimetre, like that, and the reason you're doing that is this will be here. Over there, where are we? <laughs> Where's it gone? We're going that way around. I've cut it the way around, that's why. Yes, I've done it the way around. Sorry, should it be the other way around? So this should actually be the other yeah. angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's all right. Yes, I've done it the way around. What it should be is, and I'll do it in a sec, is you should actually have it so it's that angle, so when you fold it back, imagine it's that way. Yes. You fold it back. In fact, we we'll just might do it that way. Yeah, Yeah, do it that way. There you go, it doesn't matter. We'll do it left-handed. So, so if you're left-handed, you do it this way. If you're right-handed, <laughs> the way. So what you actually do is you make sure you have a bit of a tail there so this is open. The reason being is when you sew this all the way around and you get to the other end, mm -hmm. and you have sort of that sewn onto there, you then, because you always end up with a bit extra, they always, mm. I mean, always make sure, just in case, cut off any excess you don't actually want, tuck, imagine that's there, tuck this bit in the unsewn bit there, so it's like that. Make sure it's all nice and small so you can pull that bit if you need to, so it's all nice yep. and tight there. Stitch to the end, and then once that's done, you then fold that back, and it's already encased. Oh, and lovely. And the back. Perfect. So there we go. So um, when you actually sew it on, we go all the way around to that point, do the standard binding, to make, make the mitered, mitered, mitered? Mitered, yeah. You go all the way around, and that's how you do. And then at the end, you then iron this, the actual um, bias back so it's nice and smooth, to the other side. Right. And then you actually slip stitch or stitch in the ditch to finish. So it's entirely up to you how you Entirely it up off. to you. Fabulous. Okay. Jess, thank you. That's oh, okay. my goodness. Look at this. Just beautiful. I love this print, it's gorgeous. So can I just compare, let's just compare very quickly before we finish. So these, these are basically how the two different ones are looking. Imagine this bound. So this is the main, the main details there. So this one is your main details on screen there. And this one is your kit details down there. So it's whatever, whichever one you fancy, traditional, Versus, I suppose yeah. this is more family, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it depends on your family. We, I, we probably end up with, with this one for the kids because it's all like Christmas trees and, and all that sort of stuff. And, and gold and gold. This is quite grown up. I, I, I'd love this one as well. I think it's gorgeous for me. Thank so you. That's okay. Thank you ever so much. It's good to see you. Mm. Take care. And uh, come back soon. Oh, you're back tomorrow. I'm back tomorrow, yes. Back in tomorrow with John, John I, I think. think. Yes. Enjoy. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm taking the best press with me. Right, very quickly, let's look at this. We did, uh, we did mention this very quickly. They always recommend using a starch spray. This is, to our mind, the best that we could find for a reason that it's not an aerosol one, so you don't get that white flakiness that you often get with a starch spray. So this is your best spray. It smells amazing. It's in your linen fresh spray. Uh, you will get so much out of this bottle. So much out of it. For 4 .99, it's great. They've done their shirts in it as well. Do people start shirts anymore? Anyway, if you do, you can use it for that as well. But pop that in because then you can finger press. You're not going to keep ironing when you as you go. Just finger press and off you go. Now, two different kits to choose from. We've started to see the difference in the two. And uh, now the most popular 
is the one that Jess already made. So the one that we sort of said was really, really family. But there are lots of you who've got these in your baskets. Please check out your baskets. Don't miss out on this. It's a whopping 10 and a half meters of fabric. We've put the different fabrics together for you. So you don't have to worry about the different ratios that you need or anything like that. It's all in there. So a meter of your holly, a meter there of your snowflake, a metre of your lovely goldy crystal, look at the gold on their Christmas tree, um, a metre of your emerald green. Now we get down to the vanilla, four metres of vanilla, that's going to do your backing as well, and then two and a half metres of your Christmas red, plus of course all of your quilt as you go kits and your thread as well. Now that's one option. The next option is the one that Jess has been making all hour, and that's coming with sort of port coloured threads. They, the Gutterman don't name their threads, they just give them a number. So I'm going to call them port, because then it fits in nicely with the kit. So a metre of your robins in both kind of a port and a silvery grey. Then you also get a metre of your holly there. Then you also get a metre of your dark green. You get two and a half metres of your port and four metres of your latte. And that's 19, 119.49 for all of that, plus your thread, plus as well, your quilt as you go kits. It's fabulous. Now, talking of quilt as you go, the placemats by themselves, which is this one, only, mm, only a few left. So if you are after this, maybe you have got more than six people come for Christmas, or maybe you just want to do just these. 15.99. No, we're limited because we put so many in the kits for you because we wanted to give you the full Christmas experience. We've got three left if everybody checks out the baskets. They're 15.99 each. LSEQ02. The table run is already gone. That's already gone. So if you're after the placemats, then there they are. Please put them in your basket, check out, and make sure that you've got them. You're getting six. It might be that you're so taken by the, by the Christmas ones that you want to then do everyday ones. You can do that if you've got it, then you've got it to do. Now, one PMP per day, so you can put as many different things into your basket as you like. You're ordering 10 and a half meters of fabric, still only 2.95 PMP per day. You could order six different sewing machines, would only charge you 2.95 per, uh, per day. Now, after the break, it's that perfect paper piecing. Plus, because it was my show, I might have thrown a bit of tilder in as well couldn't resist it was too beautiful not to and i hadn't seen it so that's what we've got coming up after the break so all different shapes and sizes so not just your traditional hexes all sorts of different shapes and sizes and wall hangings just gorgeous basically don't go anywhere well you can go and grab a cuppa but join me after the break and uh, it's all going to be about that english paper pea thing so i'll see you in just one moment Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Tune in on Sunday the 5th of November when we've got some fabulous shows lined up for you. Jane Alcock will be joining us at 8am and 10am to share her expertise in quilt making. She'll be passing on plenty of tips and techniques along the way as she creates one of her stunning designs. Then at 9am and 11am, the lovely Irene Colesby will demonstrate how to use the Infilla Automatic Needle Threader. It's such a handy little gadget that solves the frustration of threading needles. We'll also introduce some of the new Lewis and Irene fabrics. So make sure you don't miss these action-packed shows on Sunday the 5th of November from 8am to 12pm only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news and share your own creations with us. Hi, I'm Jennifer Taylor and I'd like to share with you three of my top tips. So my top tip number one would be your embroidery scissors. I like to keep mine on a length of thread and make a necklace out of them so you don't lose them in your sewing room. 
For my second top tip, I would suggest with your wound bobbins, popping them into a toe separator to stop them from unraveling in your sewing kit. For my third top tip, I would suggest using some really cheap, ineffective thread for your tacking. And the reason being is that it will be easier to snap and you also get to save your more expensive posh threads. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Hello, welcome back to our last hour. Well, you know, we're kicking off with something brand new. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't even know we had these, but producer Paul has been rummaging around and he came up with this. Now this is a basket quilt. So this is 60 inches by 60 inches of English paper piece delight. So brand new today. Look at this. I think it's just so utterly charming. So, all of the English paper pieces that you get in here create this. They go together to create this. 60 inches by 60 inches, and it's a wall hanging. So, let me open it up and show you. Dee, 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 dee. Here we go. So, when you get this kit, look, it's all cut out, ready for you going. Um, we counted them. 137 pieces in here, all cut out so that you don't have to. All done. So all those different pieces then pieced together to give you the baskets. Um, I will come back and go into more detail in each of these, but I just wanted to show you how these kits work. So you get all of the different pieces. You're not having to worry about cutting out anything. You just have the pieces and new English paper piece. Now the next one is Antique Garden. Here we go. Is this new as well today? We haven't seen this for a very long time though, have we? March, that's a very long time, March. So for 16.99, look at that, isn't that lovely? This is gonna be approximately 18 and a half by 20 and a half inches. So all of the pieces are in there, you just add whatever colors you wanna do it in. So great for busting those scraps. It is a lovely rainbow look, isn't it, Produce Paul? But, and there it tells you your fabric requirements, should you wish to do it exactly like it's done on the front. But otherwise, I'd be, I'd be going through my scraps. Now, next one coming up. I'm trying to be organized over here. Oh, yesterday's stars. Oh, this is lovely, this one. All of these are limited stock, just so that you know, we don't carry a huge stock of these, but it's 16.99. Now this is going to finish being 37 inches by 37 inches. We haven't seen this since March, but what a lovely thing to have on your wall. Whether you're working, because we've got um, one of our guests is doing an English paper piecing thing around all of the fabrics that she's used on the shows. It's like her sewing quarter journey. Ah, oh, now what's, what, what's, oh this, yeah, this has got a lovely description. What is it? Set up your telescope because you'll witness the prettiest constellation of stars threatening to explode. That's that. For a wall hanging. Perfect. Ah, a little of this, a little of that. A little of this, a little of that. Now this is gonna be 30 inches by 36 inches. So if you're someone that gets bored by doing just the same thing, mix it up a bit and have literally a little of this, a little of that. Again, not seen these since March. So 15.99, all of the paper pieces that you need are in this pack plus full instructions in each of these. So you are absolutely good to go as soon as you get this. Fab. Now, oh, hang on. Oh, oh, oh. 
the way we're going to do it this, this show, at this hour, is to go through them so that, because you can't start buying until they're up on the website. So we'll go through them first, then we'll go through in more detail. If you've got any questions, then just message in, and I can always go back and go into more detail if you see one that you've absolutely got to have. And as your tumbling colours wall hanging, look at that. That's fabulous, isn't it? Finished size of 38 inches by 36 inches. That's stunning, isn't it? Oh, yeah. All the pieces in there. They've rated this as easy as well. So that's always good. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's rated as easy. So we see not all of them are rated, but that one was rated as easy. Oh, now, here we go. This is your star bouquet. Yeah. Limited stock on the star bouquet, but look at this. Now, this is going to be 14 inches by 16 inches, but very intricate. So, again, not been on air since March. And there they are. But you pop those all in together, sew them all up, and off you go. You see, this is it. A lot, a lot of these things um, are just one of those things that you go, actually, yeah. What else can I do? I've got all the cushions I need. Although you could make that into a cushion, couldn't you? That could be a cushion front. That would be amazing. That's your fabric requirements. All of them have your fabric requirements on the back. But yeah, you could. You could have that. That's um, 14 by 16 inches, so that could be a cushion front. Nice. Now, if you want just plain two-inch hexagons, we've got 25 of these. And they're, they're big. They're two, two inches, so five centimetres. 4.49, and that's the size of them. Should show full instructions with this as well, and um, there you go. That feels bigger than two inches. I guess yeah. By the time you've got your seam allowance in there, so so I would say that's going to be a, a finished two inch. Hang on a minute. There's an easy way to measure this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's your finished two inch there. So, yeah, they've given you a, yeah, that's, that's two inch there. I would say that was, that was bigger. Yeah, there you go. There you are. Now, one more to show you, which is, I think, a little bit special. It's a little bit different. Can't get that back in the packet. We'll look at that later. But this is what they make. So, this is for your bowls. So, rather than just having a blanket or a wall hanging, what about something you can use every day? How lovely. We do use these in the office every day. We've had these made for, uh, well, since they first came to it. I love this one. And you can see they look rather lovely in Tilda. And this is how they work. So, they're all English paper pieced. They're a good size, actually, aren't they? I just wanted to get those out to show you just the size because, actually, I'd be quite tempted to, um, to put a little bit of Velcro on the bottom of there and have that in my car for, you know, little bits and bobs that you need in your car. That'd be pretty, wouldn't it? And lots of different designs here. All of these. So they are between four and seven inches in diameter, and you get all of those, so that could be a little trinket box. How different do they look, though, in different fabrics? And this is how they go together. So by the time you'd stitch one side, so that's one side, and then the same again sort of fits into the bottom, and then you stitch all the way around. So they're really, they're really firm. There we go. We'll, go, we'll show you that later. Now, creative grids. Of course, we can have a show without some creative grids today. We don't have a huge amount, but uh, sometimes you just need, this is your hexagon trim tool. So you can see up here, when you start doing it, so it's almost like doing a log cabin, but with hexes. 
So you, you're adding on each, and so this is going to show you how to trim back each time. You line up your, uh, your two inch hexi, and then you work your way through and you trim back, like we did with the log cabin tool yesterday. So this is $24.99. Have we had this on air? Because I haven't seen this. And it's a great tool. As ever, with your creative grids, never throw the instructions away, ever. Else you will live to regret it. But there they are. So it shows you exactly how to use it. And this, so this is a trimming back tool. Okay. Now you could, of course, use this to do um, to include your seam allowance, line it up so that if you wanted to cut out your, your English paper piecing sizes yourself and then your fabric, you can use it to do that as well. So multiple uses with this, which is fab. And then, and the other thing is because it's clear if you're fussy cutting, you can see through. Now, here's another one. This one goes down much smaller. We've only got nine of these. This is your hexagon. And um, here we go. So it, oh, hang on. I need to find something light to put behind that. There you go. Our boxes, they're so handy, aren't they? There we go. So that is your inch. And then you've got your inch and a half for your seam allowance. So that would be the size. You could cut your paper to that size. And then you'd cut your fabric to that paper to that size, fabric to that size, and so on and so forth. So you can trim down. Yes, $6.99. Easy. Now, so that's the smaller ones. Now, we've also got other templates. Oh, by the way, you get full, full instructions with that as well. Now, let me show you as well these. These are clever. Now, you get all of these in this kit. This is from Clover. And... Um, this is how this is working. So, with this, you can make your own templates. So, inside each of these, you draw around, and that will give you your English paper piece size. Then you would draw around the outside. That's a quarter of an inch. You draw around the outside for your fabric, and then that gives you a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So, if you want to make something out of all those hexes, then you can do that. But here's the thing. If you want to do other sizes... Well, you'll notice is that that edge and that inside edge, the, the internal edges, are exactly the same. So you can start to build up different sizes. Again there. If you want to do different shapes and different sizes, then you can do all of that. Um, so you've got all of those options in that. So it comes, you've got triangles, you've got your hexagons, you've got everything going on there, which is just fab. And you're good to go, different sizes as well. So remember, your paper piecing size is on the inside and then your fabric size is on the outside. And you've got that as a guide, which is fab. So you're getting all seven of those. It's all in there. Now, more paper piecing, paper piecing tastic. I think English, I don't know if English paper, paper has just always been a really popular thing or if it's just really taken off. Certainly we've noticed it being incredibly popular. Now, and things like your tilde, your tilde fabrics lend themselves spectacularly to English paper piecing because the designs are so beautiful and you can fussy cut. So let's have a look at the first one that we've got here. This is your mini flower. We only have seven of these, but this will give you 28 flowers, patchwork flowers. So that's 196 pieces. That makes, obviously, your 28 patchwork flowers. They're seven centimetres. That's nearly three inches across. But you see, you'd then, you could then applique. So this isn't going to be like hexagons where they're all going to slot in perfectly. This is going to be different patchwork appliques that you do using your gorgeous tilde fabrics or other fav fabulous favourite fabrics, but all the pieces are in there. All of them are in here, plus really, really um, detailed instructions. Here we go. Now, maybe you want diamonds. Now, you can patch these, work these in together if you want, but this is your um, mini diamonds, 192 of these, so that's going to be 32 patchwork stars. Now, maybe... You just want to do um, 32 patchworks 
applique those onto 32 different patchworks and just have those as al alternate pieces in your patchwork. But it's 675, and only six of those left. We don't know if we'll get any of these back. So if you want them today, grab them. What a great, great way. Now you see this, oh, let's go with this one first. This is your mini hexagons. So these are one point, these are truly, truly idly diddly. These are only one and a half centimeters. That's 0 0.6 of an inch. Again, 196 of these, that's 28 patchworks if you're doing them like a flower like that. So you've got, there we go, you've got all of those in there for 6.75. And then the last one, which I haven't seen before. Oh, there are only two left. Oh, you're gonna have to be really quick. So this is, um, it's a little bit, yeah, is it? Feels a little bit like miss it, miss out. This is your paper piece of pliques. So you've got 105 pieces here, but you've got um, three large, eight medium, and three small houses, 14 trees, 16 flags, and five birds. All for six ninety nine. You've got a veritable village in there for six ninety nine. Two left. There you go. Pop that in your basket. Don't miss out. So, something like these, any of these, are going to call for beautiful fabrics. So, of course, I went for Tilda, of course, because I hadn't seen these, and I am super, super, super thrilled. Now. Which of these can I open? Are there ones that I can open? No, oh, can we just check with Amy if these are the ones I can open? Look at this. <gasps> so this is from the Cottage Range. Which is just, look at the detailing there. Absolutely exquisite. Apparently I can open all of them. Fabulous. Good. Yay! That's what I wanted to hear. So each of individual fat quarters. So you don't have to spend an absolute fortune. You can find the one that you want and just go for it. Yay! There you go. That's got all of your washing instructions and everything on there. So always keep hold of that. But here's the thing. Fussy cutting with your English paper piecing. That's the name again. So for example, if you're using these then that's a really lovely way to be able to see. So if you're using these templates, then you can see absolutely where you're going when you, when you draw on. Just imagine that as a centerpiece for something. But then also, you see, if you're using any of the templates, then you can use that as well. Now. Um. Let's go. Oh, now this, I chose this one because um, it's bonfire night. Um, oops. On the weekend so this is fireworks here they are yeah well there we go if I pop that there then you can get a good idea of what that's going to look like again this is a fat quarter and how about just fussy cutting little bits like that Yeah, so you can just, or maybe you just want the central piece there. It's entirely up to you how you want to work this. But I just, it, it gives you different options because you've got different pieces of interest. Lovely. And then, uh, so let's stick with the pinky type ones. Oh, Jess was going crazy over this when I showed her this earlier. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've got it in blue as well. This is it in pink. But you've got to see. Oh, yes, 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 yes. All of these four ninety nine for a fat quarter of beautiful Tilda. Now, you know I love Tilda. I, I've never made any, any, any. Um, I've never hidden that, ever. But I didn't always know about Tilda. I didn't always understand about Tilda. I didn't always get it. And you have to use it before you get it. You, you, have, to, you have to use it before you really understand the joy of your Tilda. So maybe this is, if you, why does Natasha keep harping on about how gorgeous Tilda is? Maybe spend your 4 99 get a fat quarter and see about the quality, see about how soft it is, see about how lovely it is to use and you won't look back. And then you see all of the different um, series that she brings out, all the different ranges, they're exquisite and, um, and they all work beautifully together. So uh, that was the red, let me show you the blue is lovely and just 4.99 means that you can really 
pick the ones that you want. Because sometimes, you know, you've got something that you know it's going to go with. Like, I know that my mum would absolutely love that. Imagine that. Paper pieced out. Beautiful. Absolutely exquisite. Look at that. Just the detail in there. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Now, what else did I choose? Oh, yeah. Oh, now. Yeah, you might be able to tell that I did really, really love that pattern. So I got it for you in red as well, because I know that some of you absolutely love red. But it's a soft red. It's not an in-your-face red. It's a real soft, gentle red. And they've mixed it through with the blue, which is really lovely. So if you've got various blues and things, wee! There it is. So this is your botanical red. Now, uh, ignore the fact that it says sage. 4 99 that's, that's, that's our graphical error, but that's the one that you're getting. And then the last one here is this one here. Uh, you know, I'm missing a fat quarter bundle. What, this one? Can't do it. Right, let's have a look. Ah, oh, now, we put this on the show because sometimes you just need every colour under the sun. Look at these. Imagine just doing a massive, great big rainbow English paper piece item. 20 pieces here, 5 inch, 7 99 We've never showed you this size before or this number before, but look at that. Isn't that just fabulous? Brand new today. Look at that. So for your English paper piecing, well, it's one of those things, isn't it? You might use it for your English paper piecing. You might use it just um, because they're all cut, ready to, ready to play. Go for it. Now, what I've also got here is um, the, the Plum Red Tilda. Now, this is um, the Cottage Collection. You're getting one, two, three, four, five. Is this the one I can open, Amy, or is there what, there's one already open, isn't there, out of this? Have you got that? I'm, open, I'm, I'm fine to open this one. Oh, good. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. These are the ones that you're getting here. So I've already had a look at that one in close, closer detail. But in here, oh, you're going, oh, brilliant. Here we go. Look at these. Aren't they brilliant? Beautiful warm pinks and burgundies. Really, I don't normally see this colour with Tilda, but how lovely to see it here. Oh, just a stunning collection. 19 99 gives you all five of those. And this is from, this is from your cottage collection. Absolutely love it. Fabulous. Just brilliant. Um, no, I don't have a Tilda Charm Pack. Should I have a Tilda Charm Pack? Oh, we're missing something, apparently. Right, let's pack those away. Now, next up, let's go back through and have a look at... Oh, most popular. Here we go. Pop that up there. Oh, delicately. Oh, the brand new, brand new, brand new. Oh, the baskets now. Oh, that's here. Hey, look, now I promised that I'd go into greater detail with this, didn't I? So let me do that for you. This is what you get. These are your English paper pieces here. This is your basket quilt wall hanging. This is going to be 60 inches by 60 inches. Let me get a tape measure. Where's my tape measure? Here we go. Just so that you can get an idea of the size that you're going to be looking at. Oh, basically, my entire tape measure size. That's how much you're going to be English paper piecing. That, by that. Fab. Now, in here, it's a good size, actually, isn't it? So, obviously, these are all the pieces that you get. I think Producer Paul and I counted them as being 137. And then really comprehensive instructions. I don't know if we can go over the top with this. Uh, 
Lots of you loving the EPP. In fact, when we had at Festival of Quilts, we had a stand, and a lot of you came and joined us with the EPP. Those um, EPP pieces have now been sent off to be made into a quilt. These are all the pieces that you get. These are all the different types of, this is your fabric requirements. And then talks about thread color. So it doesn't, you know, if you're new to EPP, it doesn't leave anything for you to worry about. Talks about how to cut it in your stepping stone blocks. So how to put them all together, which is really lovely. How easy is that to follow? Really fabulous. And so then it goes through your basket handles and how to take the paper out as well, because you can reuse these. In fact, we'll talk about that in just one moment. Here we are, and then here you've got your basket block, so it shows you how to do your basket block, how to do your, uh, your winter rose petals, how to do your honeycomb, all of that. So look how much detail these goes into. That's why I wanted to get these instructions out to really show you. And then here you've got your black-eyed Susan. That's that one, yeah? Uh, this one is your grapes galore. Well, four. And then... <laughs> There we go. And then, so all of these different baskets, these are what you're going to be able to make. And all of these pieces, all of, oh gosh, look, it goes on and on. Wow. So all of these you're going to be able to make using this kit. We haven't ever had this on air before. It's $17.99. We don't carry a huge range of these. And then it shows you how to put them all into order in there. Isn't that lovely? So you can actually, that's, I think that's probably a far better gives you a far better idea of what you're, what you're getting than the picture on the front. There you go. Isn't that fabulous? So every alternate block is a basket. And then it shows you how to do the blocks. That was it for so, uh, Produce Ball quite likes it just in black and white. Now here we just do it like that. All of that in this kit. It's very detailed actually, isn't it? Now, next most popular are the st yesterday's stars. Oh, that was the one that had the lovely right up wasn't it what did it say about that let me find it are we allowed to open all these yeah let's go for it we are limited stock on this though so if you want it please grab it quickly now i'm only going into detail with these because we don't well we haven't seen it, some of these at all but here are all your pieces in here All nicely packaged, ready to go. So you're not having to do the only fabric. The only cutting you're going to have to do is with your fabric. Look at that. That's quite eye-catching, isn't it? Fab. So you're going to be making up those blocks. Now that's putting it together. I've skipped a few bits. There we go. So that's how to put together each of those. How to then piece them. But if you are brand new, absolutely brand new to English paper piecing, you will get step by step in here how to do it. So how to do your hexagons, how to do your diamonds. Then over here it shows you how to do your curves. So it's all the detail is in there. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. What I love about English paper piecing is that it's just so portable, which is brilliant. Oh, the tumbling colors wall hanging. That was gorgeous, wasn't it? It's very dramatic looking. Um, uh, what I've noticed is that all the boys love this one. And I think it's because it's, it almost looks like a... Um, uh, one of those... Oh, what's the word I want? Yeah, no, well, I wasn't going to say Tetris, but uh, sort of illusion things. Now this is rate, optical illusion. So you've got your easy. This is rated as easy. Should we see why? Let's see why this is so easy. Because it looks very technical, doesn't it? But no, look, these are all the pieces that you need. So it's just diamonds. That's, that's why it, oh yeah. So all of these, you, lots of you with it in your baskets. So they're all your pieces. Look, that's a big wodge. <laughs> all of those there. And then you get all your details, how to put it together, where to start, what to do. Look at that, isn't that dramatic? 
Now this hasn't been on air since April. We haven't, we just haven't seen it very much at all. I'm so pleased to have it back on air. It's just looking fab. And then of course, in, in each of these, you're also getting just your very basic step-by-step. -step. Just how to do it, how to do English paper piece. If you never read English paper piece before, brilliant. It's gonna show you exactly how to do it. Oh, now something that's running low. Oh no, yes, the creative grid. Let's pile those up there. I don't want to lose any of those pieces. Let's pop that over there. Now, this is the creative grid. Now, let me pop this again. My sewing quarter box is coming in very handy, isn't it? Let's see how I'm best to do this. Down the bottom here, you can see their ideas as to how you can put different blocks together. Half of the stock of this has already gone. As ever, it's Creative Kids, so they know exactly what they're doing with it. That is your finished size inside there. So if you are using this to create your English paper piecing pieces, then that's great, you've got that. But if you are using this as a trim tool so that you can make those, it's double bubble. So you can use this for multiple, multiple uses. And of course, you've got very detailed instructions. Let me show you these instructions here because it opens up, opens up the auction. So it might be that you don't want to do English paper piecing, but you do want to do something with your hexagons. Great. When you do want to do your English paper piecing, then you've got this to make your little pieces and cut those out. It almost looks like a rose, doesn't it? When it's all put together over here. It's fab. There you go, but half of that stock has gone. I've never used that. Uh, which wall hanging, Bridget? Uh, star bouquet. Let's have a look. Limited stock. Probably not going to get it back. But this is your star bouquet. All pieces including easy piecing. Let's get this out and have a look. Because to me, that finish, wouldn't that be lovely in a baby's bedroom? I don't know if that's just because of the colours that they've used, that that really does appeal to me for maybe if you've got a grandchild on the way making them a little blanket like that. The tilde would be lovely in that. But all of these things, it's just a matter of fabric choices. So this hasn't been on since March, has produced Paul. And again, really detailed instructions. They're all your pieces. So they are little idly biddly biddly bits. Oh, so all of the templates there and off you go. It just shows you how to do it. And also shows you which colours. So it might be that you've bought... Um, different fat quarters, different tilde fat quarters, blue, green, purple, yellow, pink, you would just make sure that you cut out the right, the, the right correct numbers in there. So it breaks it down really clearly, really easily, which is really fabulous. And look at these little pieces. So this will give you, now what size is the wall hanging? 14 by 60. Now you see we say wall hanging, but there's no reason that you couldn't make that into the front of a cushion or something like that. And look how tiny these pieces are. This is a really great portable thing, isn't it? Because what I would tend to do, I'd actually go through and use my scraps, to be honest. It's a great scrap buster. And so you can, you can then just sit and sew while you're waiting for someone to finish football club or this club or that club or sit there in front of the TV. But the reason that I brought you so many different tildes, and for example, okay, Let's get the bundle. There you go. So you've got your ditzy print there. And that's going to be gorgeous. So you could you would cut out a certain number of those. And then maybe you want the center to be you see this is <gasps> maybe you want the center to be that hexagon there. That would be really stunning, wouldn't it? So because you just get to play, because it's all cut out for you. Oh, what about this one here? Could be, you could do that over your leaf. So you can fussy cut, you can really play. Imagine, uh, so that is, yeah, that's one of your stars. So that, that could be all of, you could fussy cut out all of those. It could be your scraps, but why not get colors that all coordinate like this? Be absolutely gorgeous. Now, the traditional way of English paper piecing, gosh, you get so many pieces in this, is to tack. 
is to get thread. And I, you know, I used to use my, my old thread and, uh, and, you know, like the ones that you get in the, 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 you know, when you go and stay in a hotel and they give you like sewing kits, I'd use up all that kind of thread. It wasn't my favorite thread and often in colors that I just wouldn't use. But then, do you know, I'm just going to put that there. Then something happened. Oh, you want to go to this? Oh, right, okay. Okay, so this, this doesn't link with what I was saying at all. Uh, so producer Paul wants me to show you the permanent glue here. So if you are gluing things down, then this is your permanent fabric adhesive. This is your 303 KIGQ68. There you go. Now, what I was just saying was about the, um, the glue that has now been made specifically for English paper piecing which is very exciting. We've got two different options for you today. In this kit here, this is your Soline fabric glue pen here. Comes with a blue refill. Now the blue color, don't worry about the blue color, that goes clear as soon as you use it. There it is, there. Um, and that just go, gives you a, a guide to where you've used the glue and then it dries clear. So it doesn't stain or mark your fabric in any way, shape or form. So what it recommends is that you just use this on the actual paper pieces. So you'd put that on your paper piece, fold the fabric over. There's no need to tack. So all that time that you would have spent tying knots in the end of your, your thread to then go on and tack, you don't need to do it anymore. Glue, fold over, glue, fold over, finger press, done. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And then you can undo it when you need to. We also have refills because once you get going in this, you're going to be addicted. You're going to be absolutely addicted. Two different colours. Uh, and again, it just means that it shows up. So this is your blue one. Really inexpensive, just 2 49 It's less than your postage. So fabric, glue pen refills, XYEQ12. And then we've also got it in bright yellow. Look at that. Producer Paul always likes to go for the bright colours. £2.49 again. So just up to you. Maybe you want blue, maybe you want yellow, maybe you want one of both. They don't do anything different. They both do exactly the same job. So it's not like one's permanent and one isn't. No, no, no. It's just a matter of which colour you want to use. Now, we have another pen as well. We've got a different pen here for you. Uh, here we go. And again, you can use these. We've had guests that have used these when you're putting your zips into temporarily adhere your zips rather than having to pin. So you can use it for that. And again, this one is a bright yellow. You can wash it out. There you go. So all along the same line. So it's entirely up to you which one you decide to go for. And that's three ninety nine. dollars Just washes out. All of these just wash out. So it depends which one you fancy, really. Now, I've, oh, I've got a stock warning. What am I stock warning about? This one. Oh. First time we've brought this to air and already we've got a stock warning on it. So brand new today, look at these colours. Under £8, 7 99 20 of these five inch squares. They're so vibrant. And you've got all the colours. You see, I, always, I, I really want to do sort of a rainbow, rainbow something or another. And you just take them off in order. That's all you'd need to do. Or maybe you just want to, maybe you want to, to gift Maybe you want to do this so that actually um, you're doing the tumbling blocks and you're like, right, okay, so I'll go for that purple there and then go for a deeper purple around the side. And then you're not having to buy loads and loads and loads of different fabric. You've got it here in one portable little kit, which is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So GURW78, pop that in your baskets, check out your baskets and make sure that you're not going to miss out on that. We haven't brought that to wear before. Very exciting. Now... The hexagon templates, this one, that is, oh, that, okay, this one. Do you want to see the instructions for this? That's your hexagon tool. Now, cut your strips. So it might be that if you're doing your fabric, you'd cut um, one and a half inch strip, then cut along there, spin it around, line it up, cut, and that's how you, how you use it. Let me show you the instructions here. Do 
Oh, actually, it's, it's, it's really easy. It's just that it's in a foreign language on the inside. So there's your strip. Cut down one side, spin it, cut the other. It really is as simple as that. It's so easy to use. And then you just do it for, for whatever size. They've used the biggest size there. But that's it. That's all, it, all you need to do. Now, over half of the stock of that has gone. So if it isn't your basket, please check out your basket. Don't miss out on that. That is $6.99. And now I'm so pleased that the paper bowls are really popular this hour. Really pleased. Uh, because here they are. This is, well, whatever fabric you decide. We've got some in Kaif, we've got some in Tilda. But this, this is the size of them. They are between four and seven inches in diameter. And they're what you're getting. So one, two, three, four, five, six different bowls in there. Now the paper stays in in these, which is what gives it, helps give it that rigidity. Do you see how they put, go together? Show you that. Okay. So you would start off with that. Cut your fabric quarter of an inch or larger around the side. Then get your glue, 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 glue around the edges and fold your fabric back. Then put two together there. Now this has actually been machine stone, but you can whip stitch and you just want to catch the edges along there. Just catch those threads. And there they are like that. So you would join all of those together. So it looks like that. So that gives you the outside, but now you need the inside. So you basically repeat the whole process. So you could start off with one, and then you see this is that isn't that just ideal for um, for fussy cutting? Just fabulous. And then you just need to stitch up the sides there, and then that then gets placed inside the other bowl, and then you stitch around those edges like that. Now you see, I'm very tempted. I would be very tempted to put a little bit of Velcro and pop that um, in my car pop a bit of loose change, hair grip, whatever else it is that I find in there. But just look at the difference, just in different fabrics. Really lovely. Maybe you want to, as a trinket, you know, put your, if you take your watch or your jewellery off at night, then maybe have that by the side of your bed. Pop all your little things in there. Keys, if you, when you come in, have it on, the, on a side table. What would you put in there, Patrice Paul? Oh, buttons. Yeah, you could put some of your habitat, have it for storage, have it, you know, for, to keep those little things. Maybe loose change that comes out your pocket. Like my husband is always, and he just ponks it on the side. Pop it in one of these. Make it actually make it look nice. It's another excuse, isn't it, to get some of your favourite fabrics out and about around the house in a really useful way. Lovely. So that's what you're getting in with that kit there. Now, Antique Garden is next. Let's have a look at that. Pile those pots up over there. Uh, 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 antique Garden. Oh, this one. Oh, nice. Easy piecing again. Look at these idly bitty ones. Now you see that's why I would want my glue because these are such tiny pieces. So get them all glued and then off you go. This is $16.99. You're getting all of those. I wouldn't want to be cutting those up individually. I wouldn't want to be cutting those with a rotary cutter or anything else. I'm glad they're all cut for me. Um, now you can follow this absolutely to the letter. Or if you've gone, at, oh yeah, producer Paul, if you've gone for that, then you could do it in that, that you could create that rainbow effect. And then, this is your antique garden here. All of your instructions there. And it shows you exactly how to piece everything together. Isn't that wonderful? Really wonderful. And of course, because in each of these kits, you get your guide onto just how to English paper piece. So if you never have, how to. Now you see, they talk about basting. So this shows you how they would base. So they would stitch each of these pieces together. 
But here's the thing, it's quite labour intensive. You can, and there are those of you I know that absolutely love to, that's how you've always done it, it's how you'll always do it. But instead, if you were just using your glue, glue alongside, glue alongside, glue alongside, and just fold. And then it means that actually you've got these to reuse because then you can just take them out. It's, it's not a permanent glue in the glue pens. Okay, so that's, that's the really lovely thing. And the glue pens were made specifically for things like English paper piecing. So when you've got all of these, use your glue pens and then you're going to be making and reusing and making. That'll be amazing. 16.99. These haven't been in since March. WNHN56. Oh, ooh, now a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Why not? Where did I put that? Oh, right here, perfect. So maybe you just, I like to think of this almost as kind of an English paper piecing sampler because you do get to try all different shapes and sizes, which is lovely if I can get it out of the packet. Yeah, it's all here, isn't it? And it just gives you a, a good idea of how these are gonna piece together. We'll get, we'll get that in just one moment. So there we go. Yeah. And then you see, are they putting, what are they putting in the center of the flowers? Oh, they're putting, yeah, they are putting the circle in the center there. But all your pieces are here. So you just go through and go, right, that's what I need. Ding, ding, ding. Easy to follow. All your instructions are in there. There you go. And that's one of your flowers done. But look, you've got all of those pieces in there. Look, you've got a little heart as well. And so, of course, again, all those instructions. And it's showing you how to do each of those pieces. Because it's different. So if you are someone that gets maybe a little bit bored of doing the same thing uh, repetitiously, then here we go. This gives you different, different shapes to work with and to play with. And then maybe you might go, actually, I really love doing tumbling blocks. So I'm going to do an entire one out of tumbling blocks. And again, it's showing you how to piece everything together step by step. Nothing is left unsaid in this. Like, right, it's so detailed. Really lovely. Really lovely to work with. And um, so it's 30 inches by 36 inches. So that's a lovely size as well. Right, so let's put that away. Uh, the what's sold out? Oh, the village. Oh, we only had a couple of those, didn't we? So well done. Let's pop those away. Here we go. Let's get. Here we go. Just making space. Right, so the village is gone. Right, I'm just playing catch up here, please. Right, village is gone. Which one next? The diamonds. Are we running low on the diamonds? There we go. These are your diamonds, 675. Now, you are going to get 192 pieces. That will make 32 patchworks. And each of those diamonds is three centimeters along sort of that length there. What a beautiful addition. So lots of you with it in your baskets. It's a great way to either use up your scraps or, um, there you go. So that gives you all the details on there. But within that, you're also going to get um, all full instructions as well. Maybe you bought the Tilda uh, stocking, nice little stocking filler. Very nice little stocking filler. But so yeah, 192 pieces. Imagine having to manually cut out 192 mini diamonds. Like, no, that's not going to happen. One that's even harder to cut yourself, and that's your mini hexagons. Okay, less than half of the stock of this is gone already. English paper, it's just taken off, hasn't it, completely? So again, 196 pieces here. That will make 28 patchwork flowers like that. And you can, well, you see, with the hexagons, you can interlock them beautifully if you want to make one great big thing. Or you could just applique down a little English paper piece flower. Now, a message from Caroline. She says, just received my fourth sewing quarter parcel this week. It's like Christmas has come early. Oh, Caroline, I'm so thrilled for you. Really lovely. Um, our new warehouse doing an absolute cracking job uh, in getting all your orders out. Now, 
the flowers. This one. That's your mini flowers. All by Tilda, these ones. And so you know they're going to work perfectly with your Tilda fabrics. Again, limited stock on this. I don't know if we'll get this back. I really don't. But it's 6 75 you're getting 196 pieces that will make 28 patchwork flowers. Now, when I said with the hexagon, you could, um, they would fit nicely into each other. These won't, so you just applique these down. Maybe you want to do... Maybe that's just going to be the centerpiece on a cushion. You could applique anything, anywhere. It's really beautiful. Oh, yes. But have you got, oh right, talking of hexagons, yes. These ones. Now I think there's an error on this. Because it says it's two inches, but that is not two inches. Let's measure it. Well, no, you see this is it, because upstairs is saying, is it a finished two inch? No, because you see with the English paper piecing, that is your size. You would then cut your fabric larger but it's okay because we've got this to measure. It's three, in, it's three and a half inches. So that is three and a half inches. There is an error on there. It's three and a half inches, not two and a half, two, not two inches. So if you are after these, they are three and a half inches. It says it on the packet incorrectly, but that's what's in here. So I'm assuming that you will get out exactly that. So it'll be, it'll, be love, it'll be larger. I don't think it's in the wrong packet. I don't think it, because we don't, we don't stock any other sizes. So there we go. But if you're loving that, basically, if you love that size, grab this. 4 49 25 of those, already done. And if you're using your glue, then you can just reuse afterwards. There you go. Maybe you want to make your own templates. Maybe you want to use these just to help you with your fussy cutting. You know, when I had the Tilda fabric out and I was going, oh, just imagine just that bit. And then you can start to use these together. And the reason that these, these are your clover templates, the reason that these are so clever is that the inside gives you your paper size and the outside gives you your fabric size because the width of this is quarter of an inch. So paper size, fabric size, quarter of an inch. So that will be your finished size there, and that finished size edge there, and that finished size edge there are the same. So you can start to put different shapes and sizes together. It'd be really lovely. Same with this here. I don't know if that's why they're, all, they're both blue. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, you see, that's just it. You see, the boys upstairs are saying, I think the blue fit together and the pink fit together. But where does that one then fit in? I'm sure there's probably a shape that you can do where you then just have a little triangle in there. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not up there enough to know all of those. But look, the blues obviously work together. Oh, there you go, look at that. Like that. Ta-da! And then your pink ones. So again, you'll see the inside of that is the same as the inside of that. So you can work those together and work them around. It's lovely. It's a really lovely kit to use. So you get seven, three pink, four blue, and off you go. So that's your fabric cut. That's your um, template cut. Now, the first thing we brought you to air is somewhere. It was brand new. And so, ah, here it is. I can't remember where I put them all. Here we go. So I'll, I'm going to show you the instructions because 137 pieces, but the instructions are here. This is what won it for me, was how clear these instructions were. So you can get all your different colours, all your different scraps, all your favourite bits of fabric, and you can be making this. Isn't that fab? So every alternate one is a basket of some shape, size or description. This is page eight of your um, instructions, but look at, just look how clear they are. So you're going to know exactly which shapes. It tells you here exactly which ones and how many you need, what fabric to cut, and then how to put them together. Because you don't get a repeat of that. Each of these are different. So you've got your hexagons there, your circles there, and it just shows you how to put them all together. It's really, what a really lovely project. 
really lovely. And this is going to end up, this is quite big actually when it's finished. It's 60 inches by 60 inches. But when so much love and care and attention has gone into this, you're going to want to frame it, aren't you? You're going to want to have this up on the wall. Now the most popular what, Producer Paul? The most popular thing this hour are the bowls. Do you know what? I really get that because... Yeah, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a, we have a little struggle in our household as to uh, my taste of fabric and where it can all go, which room is suitable for, you know, tilde everywhere. But this is a great excuse to get little flashes of your favourite uh, fabric out and about and no one can complain because it's functional. And if it's functional, no one can complain. Maybe have it on the side, put your spare change, your keys, your trinkets... All those sorts of things you can come out and go in it. And you get, did we decide it was six or seven bowls? One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go, six. And they vary from four to seven inches in diameter. It says you can use scraps or fat quarters. So maybe you've gone for some of the Tilda fat quarters. Look at those online. We've got so many more of those online as well for just four ninety nine. So grab those as well. And these are going to be absolutely perfect. What loads of the fat quarters? Oh, loads of this in your baskets. Sixteen ninety nine DXHN seventy six. Now another one that's very, very pot. You see, now I have to give you a heads up. If you love your English paper piecing, then you have to watch on the weekend as well. And that's. I'm just going to give you a wink. Uh, what am I looking at next? Star boo. Oh, mm, it's yesterday's stars. Uh, I know, but I'll put them all over the place. Uh, uh, ba, ba, ba. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is it the other side of the tilde? Is it? No. Uh, 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 here it is. Here it is. Put them around all over the place. There we go. Star boutique. Lots of you with this in the basket. I'm not surprised. But this is it. So um, I think absolutely beautiful in those pastel colours. Lovely for maybe a new baby. Producer Paul's like, oh, I really like it in black and white. So actually, you know, just by changing the different colourways changes the feel of it completely. But again, takes you step by step all the way through. So you've got different shapes in here. So you've got the central or the hexagonal piece there. Then you've got the petals but then you've also got the diamonds which join them all together and all of these you've got all of these different pieces in there so you see those all go around like that there's your central piece there and so you just join those up. whoops join those all up hey look grab your glue as well don't forget your glue and then your diamonds you see slot in there it's really satisfying but use, you could use up your scraps or you could get special fabric for it. But it's just a lovely project. Um, I keep a little bit of English paper piecing just in my car, just in the, in the arm bit of my car. Actually, I haven't at the moment because I've just, I've, um, I've just borrowed my mum's car. But normally in the arm bit of my car, there's a little bit of this. Because sometimes I get to, you know, if the, if the motorways are kind, I leave here, go to pick up my son, and I've got 15 minutes to wait. What do I do? What do I do? It's not really enough to go home or anything like that. A little bit of paper piecing. Lovely, really lovely. Just nice and relaxing after day at work. Ha, ah, really lovely. You can do it while you're watching a bit of TV, maybe watching us, maybe sat with your husband in the evening, maybe there's football on, shock horror. Uh, then, <laughs> yeah, cameraman Mike's like, yes, that's more like it. Football on. Um, you see, lots of ways to go. Now, John's in tomorrow. I'm going to give my voice a bit of a rest. Sorry about all the coughing and everything. So, Christmas storage at 8 a.m. with that Friday feeling. That's for Jess. Jess is back again. Uh, then John's fabric finds at 9 a.m. That's brand new fabric. John's got those brand new fabrics for you. Then at 10 a.m. quilt as you go. That's what QAYG stands for. Quilt as you go. And then at 11 a.m. 
pre-cut perfection. If you love a pre-cut, that is the place to be tomorrow. Um, hey, look, it's fabric. It's all fabric and we all love fabric here. That's what we do. So it leads me to say, have a lovely rest of the day. Please check out your baskets. Don't miss out on anything. Remember, if you can't remember the codes, either give us a call or check out the website, but make sure that you're not missing out. And I will see you bright and early on Saturday and leave you in John's capable hands for tomorrow. Bye-bye. Join us on Saturday the 4th of November when we'll be joined by House of Alistair owner Alistair MacDonald. Alistair's love of Liberty Fabric and experience working in women's fashion sparked the elusive House of Alistair and his range of fabulous fabric and haberdashery products, some of which we'll be sharing with you on Saturday. There will be fun, frolics and fabulous fabric, so don't miss Alistair MacDonald's debut shows on Saturday the 4th of November at 9am and 11am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78.